very own cuddle toy. But we're gonna transition here to our first icebreaker for TNS 31, Zilla versus Shanti. This is gonna be a good one already. Zilla, the first Don, only 6,000 Tekken prowess. Clearly, he's gonna get bodied here, right? Nah, I don't think you all really know what to expect from my boy here. That's bro, a 20 I... win win streak, bro. That's a sick fight, bro. What an interruption! Forget the back sway too. Go to the down back one to stay engager. But Shanti's defense looking pretty strong until they press into the string and secures Zilla a perfect for the first yeah, round. I think Kazuya's low heat smash is minus 14 instead of minus 15. Otherwise, it was slow, not sure. They both going for a lot of homing options right now and getting the depth finish punish. I didn't even know that Kazuya had a consistent depth finish punish that wasn't electric. Neither did I. But the more, you know, they finally gave one to him. But Shante giving the rest back of this pressure into the heat burst, into the engager, and now has equaled the health and putting Zilla on rage. Oh yeah, look at how much we've seen the Dombek 1-2 already in just these first two rounds right now. Zilla is not getting caught by Shanti doing the engulfing dragon. He knew he was going to do something after that. Caught him swaying back in. And is going to start it off as well in the third round with a counter hit down 1 plus 2. All the way to the wall, but doesn't want to go for the ender because he's going to get a reset into the wall split with the CD 1 plus 2. Cross double down, but Shanti's shoulder's out of trouble. Yeah, that patch aside fist doing that work into the abolishing fist 20 game win streak destroyed with the no round brown that one's gotta hurt that was a clean 3-0 by zilla zilla challenged everywhere he could and he won and walked out like a gambit the profit that he just made was all golden yeah, speaking of gaming, my man has got aces up his sleeves consistently with the crouch dashes, man. And the uh, abolishing fist, the down four two as well, the patricide fist at the wall. That was some definitely oppressive stuff. Back in the day, the only death fist punish that Kazuya had was electric. I used to be a Kazuya step. player and I was like, man, it's so hard to play and punish death fist. And Cody, we all know who Cody is. And he's like, just electric. I'm like, oh yeah, just dash electric. You know, it's just that easy. Another, <laughs> just being that easy. Down for two at the beginning. Another one. That's like three. Should we start counting some more? I think we're gonna have to. Yeah. We're gonna have to. He ain't gonna stop there. We know Zilla. Oh, he tried it again. Shanti got him up on the ropes though. Mm, I have a low heat smash as well. Mine's minus twelve though. He tried again. He really tried again. But this time doesn't go for the counter, but he still got a good amount of damage. He's trying to go for a huge launcher here, but Zilla was ready for that punish into the engage with the down back one plus two. And he's trying to do it again. And successfully this so he gets a wall split into the second layer wall break. Get him. Oh, almost got the abolishing there. Shanti, you know you can expect a good punish from my boy Zilla here. He's usually known for the perfect electric punishes, but I guess now that he has down back one. Bro, he has started off abolishing Fist the last three rounds straight. It is nasty work. He's been mixing the timing a little bit, but speaking of nasty work, Shanti dropping his combo. Yikes. Zilla's close on Rage, and just as soon as they said it, Shanti puts him there and takes all the health away and secures the second round with a perfect. Now, Shanti's on survival point, and they close it out and extend gameplay. Uh, once again, down back one, two, heat engagement, punishment. He just goes, I'm going to punish literally everything with this move. I, as I say it, he is following the script. He's just going to keep doing it. Like, it's not broken. He doesn't have to change anything. Spring kicks out. Doesn't get a wall splat, but will get a break. Doesn't get the, you know, the receiving punishes of breaking that into the wall, but will receive the down back one plus two once again. Doesn't dunk the wall setting three. But Zilla continues to put on the offense and even up the round. Set point versus survival point. Shanti getting a little bit wild with that down one plus two. Zilla again having his first button be abolishing fist in round five here. Trying to light this one up, Luminary Zone. Oh man, the breaks are so good. Doesn't get the down back one plus two punish there. Doesn't go for the engager. Back he four. tried to go for the yep. electric that time, definitely. Got the back four heat engager though. Let's go. Get him over to that wall. I know you're not what trying to shred or kick that. Oh man, wave a wave with the four four three is the win for me, Zilla. Makes the comeback and secures the first game for TNS 31 and sending Shanti to the losers bracket.
with TJ Raw. I thought TJ Raw would be a Brian player. Because TJ would Ooh. be Taunt Jet. Taunt Jet, yeah. No. Nope. Taunt Jet Raw. I see, the, I see that. Let's see how raw the gameplay is though. We got the down back four getting started. I like it. Little hit and run strategy. Retro is doing what Reyna does best, put on the pressure, but DJ able to activate that power crush to stop the offense. And now we're back into this space where Retro Waver is just giving no room to breathe for Raw. Yeah, it was unfortunate. TJ Raw got the duck, but did not have the ability to act upon that duck and get a punish. And Retro Waver stops the Raw Rage Art. Wait a minute, going from Raw to making, getting this cooking with that counter hit down back for Retro Waver looking in trouble already in the second round. You're getting real long wall carry, 10 seconds in. You know you gotta hit him with a Blicky from five miles away. I forgot the Blicky was a turn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good low parry on the Hell Sweep. Okay, got Retro Waver with their back to a wall, and yet again with the Sentai mix. What a wall sweat. Unfortunately, unable to get a tornado flip after the down forward ones with Stonehead, but we'll get a raw stone in here. But TJ able to get a raw explosion to escape catastrophe and able to close out that round. TJ raw coming up with the clutch factor. Yes, sir, my man is looking in rare form. Forget raw. Let's see how well done our homie Retro Waver can get. Ah, no launch punish on that string. All good though. He's got good pressure going. Is that spike? No, it doesn't, but we'll still get a connection afterwards. Mm, much, much too fast of an option to be able to get armor through right there. Retro Waver sending it on into the possible game point here. And again, TJ Raw using that down back four as an approach tool. Both of them are slug it in out, able to just getting that invasive property, whether it's a high crush or a low crush. Oh, the down jab out of the high. Unfortunately, not able to get a lot of things, but Retro Waver, this is the start of a new beginning after this two electric combo. Electricity for our city. Retro Waver got a couple of good god fists there, and look at the float. Let's go. Jab tricks are monstrous right now, setting TJ all the way to the wall, switching up position, but TJ on the top position, but. Lights out after the flash combo will close it out. Yeah, just as you said it, you know, another couple flash punches. One, one, two. Definitely put TJ Raw in the body bag at the end of that one. Let's talk about that match real quick. Retro Waver did not give a lot of room for TJ Raw. Like, he was like, okay, the, he doesn't needed to change the pacing doesn't have to change the blueprints what really worked was just com continuously abusing the plus frames with the jabs and the down forward ones and a good amount of sidesteps good, good amount of hell sweeps good amount of sentai mix as well sometimes tj raw went in one time got the power crush on it but they started to do the quicker options the started battle. to do options that are going to beat the power crush and you know, after certain things like Hell Sweep, you're really not getting any chance to do so. We're randoming right back to the same stage, Coliseum. I think this is a better stage for Victor because of the long wall carry that he gets, but also at the same time, Randa just gets to mix you forever. Mm -hmm. and the best part about it is with Retro, like the defense by, by them is that they realize what TJ could possibly do, so the jab checks are really working on their favor. Both of them yeah. on heat, on fire, got the blue flames around them, but Retro Waver is the first one to extinguish that to add more damage after the downward one will first to heat dash. But TJ able right. to get the stumble glow in from the hell sweep, but unfortunately unable to get the launcher. Yeah, they must be too busy playing other characters sometimes doing wall standing two instead of their wall standing one. Notice how much Retro Waver is using the sidestep right and how much it's working for them as well. There it is again, Retro Waver just doing the flash columns for a defensive option and working out on their favor. Extending the lead here, but TJ doing the sidestep poking up of their own. Another down back four, but Retro Waver immediately presses with the lost ending for to take control. Mm, there is the counter hit finally on the sweep. TJ Raw finna go, he like it raw. Yeah, baby, we like it raw. Oh, we got the E first, let's go. 
damn, that damage is insane. What a step on the wall running, too. But you can't step the wall standing one or TJ. Cleaning it up, getting their first round for the second game. Extremely good, not to mention the option just as a call out for all the sidestepping that Retro Waver was doing. Oh man, the down four, one, one plus two already in heat 10 seconds in. Keeping it simple, both of them sidestepping. Moab, beautiful by Retro Waver, sidestepping to the left and getting the heat dash afterwards. And another counter hit for to add insult to injury. That puts Retro Waver to set point to move on to the bracket. Ooh, shooting them from all the way over there. Luckily, it's only a little bit of damage, but again, the down back four to start the offense. The full crouch is so good. Ooh, I like the heat popping up here and immediately using the heat dash. Not sure about that one. Mmm, that's, that's gonna had so much help for TJ acting in the heat, but Retro Waver continuing the pressure, putting TJ on, on the red. And Sorry, the down forward do ones, it. it's the small pressure, it's the small stuff. Sometimes they tell you don't sweat the small stuff, but right there, we could definitely... And you know he loves those grabs. Ooh, the Resident Evil. I like uh, it, I like it. Ada Williams. Sure is. The one again, show enough. Show enough, show them. Show enough. Why did that whiff? That was unfortunate. Nice. It had to be a spacing thing. That's not gonna whiff though. Blonde Bomb made it close to range after this engager, but this time, let's double down on the wipe. The floor point, show enough all the way to the wall. Yeah, and then the down forward one. One of the best tools that she has. I know we say that about a lot of characters down forward ones, but Nina especially is so good at locking you down. What a counter hit! Oh man! Add the salt to the wound after this counter hit, breaking the wall, and we're going down to violet systems already in this one combo. Just All the way with the heat dash. With these geyser cannon that l2k snake is running and now the throws once again hayashida come on over to me forward four with the assassin leap into the sub-zero slide that is a cold cold death that you had right there man hayashida just turned that into hypnotist because that one you know that's why i got shogun closing the range to deal with their death jesus l2k snake is not stopping the pressure look at him back again the wall again so good at being very close with his pressure using the sidestep one. Show enough, finally getting that launch punish. Am I getting the launches? Show enough. LTK Snake going over to the wall. Not quite. Oh man, immediately answers and wakes up with the blonde bomb and stopping the pressure by showing up. But showing up still alive here, blocking the strings and pushing out of it. And just wakes up with the wall standing three plus four. And we're gonna activate the wall burst making some noise afterwards and closing it with the rage art. What do you think about that wall burst right there? You think that they should have saved it or you think they blow it up so that they make sure that they don't get it next time? I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't think they expected the wall to explode. I don't think they was gonna reach. I didn't That's think fair. it was gonna reach. I thought yeah, it was just gonna just throw them off, but <laughs> hey, cherry on the top. Oh man, that was actually a really good attempt by L2K Snake. Trying to jab out of there and then duck immediately. But it doesn't even matter because L2K Snake able to get the combo right back after this float. Nice down 4 1. He's been doing that a lot and canceling the second hit into sidestep. Demon Breath is whiffing and L2K Snake is all ready to blow up the bomb, bomb, and that wall. Yeah, it was Demon Breath all whiffing and L2K smells it with the whiff punish and he's gonna add more into it and cutting it down with the ivory cutter. L2K Snake closing out the game after that small hookup and advances 1-2-0. Now funny enough, L2K Snake is named Snake because he loves Metal Gear Solid so much, loves Solid Snake, Naked Snake, and funny enough one of his best tools, the sidestep one in the move list is called Snake Shot. So we get a little bit of double hit with that extra lore in this matchup and you saw a lot of the sidestep one he even did sidestep one into stiletto heel in order to do that you got to cancel those really tight to be able to make sure that it's uninterruptible and he got a trade on it i think he traded with a jab which is like that means that you're doing it really frame tight so we can definitely battle. see that snake is on that when it comes to the specialty execution
There was a good amount of trades that L2K Sneaker was able to walk out like a gambit, man. Especially the wipe the floor trade. Oof. Yeah. Why did you go from Ada to a McDonald's worker? You that is a slurp it up. <laughs> 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 the patties. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. You're going to get French fried. Put you in the fryer. Make it a little bit oily. Snake oil, that is. It's time to combat the Chipotle Monopoly. <laughs> time to combat the Chipotle Monopoly is crazy. Oh my god. See, this is what we tell Lucas he should be on instead of us. LTK Snake putting us on though with his small poking. No combos needed. Just chip him down. Show enough says, you know what? That's a good idea. I think I'm going to do a bit of that. Shown of doing a great job putting L2K to the wall and putting them on Rage also, but this is where L2K Snake shine. When you give him room to breathe, this is where he puts on the pressure with no breaks, and that is a huge mistake of finishing the 1-1-2 one, one, combo. Ooh, the Blum Bump does not wall splat from that range, but you have your back to the wall against Nina Williams. So that's not a good thing. Honestly, that was best case scenario, but the Pillow Princess strategy, they were standing still on the floor, and that was not good for the running 3-3. Huge damage. Oh man, the side zip into the bound combo. Hasn't used Tornado Flip, but L2K Snake decides to shoot her to activate the wall. Does it again? Oh, he has so much time. It? Oh my god. I think that that was like very late on that, so it counted as a grounded hit instead. And yikes. Are we going to see the edge of the stage? I feel like I've not seen the edge of the stage like ever. Snake says you're not going to get to see it today either with the stiletto heel. Sending showing up Shogun to a different area of the Shogun. It you're gonna have to find yourself some new subjects. These samurai are mine. Man, L2K Snake breaking those walls, just representing how many times the ice cream machine is broken in the McDonald's. If you like to double dip. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, Dapper is one of those players that just continues to learn. He is a student of the game and a student of many. He just wants to get a lot of knowledge and wants to be the best in the world. But we're gonna start it off here on one of the first few matches. Dapper versus Rita Marina with the Elisa. 441,000 Tekken Prowlers too. That's gonna tell you something here. Down four, two plus three gets nothing. Rina Marina does not get the block punish and goes for heat burst. Of course you got to, you can't be dying with heat. But oh my gosh, this pressure. Tony the Salty Tiger, thank you so much for the $30 direct contribution to the match arena. We appreciate you very, very much. That's the homie is great for our contribution for our match arena. Nice down three. The timing was fantastic on that. But Dapper knows the strings, knows the tings, and how to punish him too. Looking stylish while he's doing it too. Quick first round here by Dapper. And so, this is the lucky punishes. Chloe Poss play, I think. Is that what we have here? I think so, now that you mention it, or just a furry. Could be. I don't see okay. a tail. Is that a tail? Yeah, there's that... definitely a tail. Okay. I was like, is that part of the, the bell? Is it? Is it... <laughs> Ooh, nice duck on the box stance. Hi, but Ooh. unfortunately did not get a launch punish, and so Dapper has the ability to capitalize on their misfortune. That down forward to changing the temper. And that puts Dapper two rounds to none. Oh, it's Nico Arc from that one game whose name Melty I can't Blood. remember because right, of Melty Blood? Melty Blood, yeah. Okay. Dapper, once again using the wall standing three string. And Rena Marina just not falling for it, just not caring about the box stance mix. And what a great sidewalk. Yeah, showing the move after that side step down forward two, sending Arena all the way to the wall. And with this tornado flip after the can can, and now here comes the pressure. You do not want to deal with layer pressure and gets the heat dash into the can cans one more time. He should be able to close it up. No, just leaves off with a sliver of health, but Dapper closes it with a down forward one. That was a fantastic realignment to be able to optimize the rest of that combo right there. I'm surprised they didn't get another one but the vector wasn't quite on target with the rest of the wall. And then of course, finishing out with a down forward one, the tried and true. Man, even with how off axis the combo was, Rena's body was kind of kind of off angle too. Yeah. And Dapper was still able to optimize the combo, getting everything, no whips, no nothing. That was a sick sidewall combo. Get ready for the next battle. Going into the second match here, randoming to Midnight Siege. 
So you know we're about to get some close quarter action. Yes, sir. The TQC is going to be here. And we also are going to have some explosiveness. Not that we haven't already. Here's the first piece of it. The counter hit. Bach 2. Sorry, K and K. It's the wall. Back in the bathroom. Someone to wash his hands. But Rena doesn't want to wash hands. Activating the heat because they want to throw hands. But Dapper doesn't want to deal any of it. So just kind of keep it away. Let their heat meter just run out. So good job by Dapper not trying to go for a launch punish at that long range down three block because of the variable frames. And then just being like, you know what? I'm just going to get my wall standing threes. This string has been doing well for me. I'm going to push it in and move forward. Oh, the box stand dug under. That's going to hurt a lot. That's going to add a lot of mental weight when you get that crushing from the round start. Rena Marina trying to find an opening, but Dapper's not letting them at all. This combo is insane, and we're going to close it out with another perfect Dapper. Just like that, putting themselves into set point. We're going to start it off with the back's weight and immediately go for the combo. Dapper doesn't get the pickup, but has a right position, able to duck, and the wall is right there. We're about to go on stereo. Yar, Dapper getting another one of these fantastic wall combos into some guarantees. Rena Marina trying to fight their way out as you should, but unfortunately the heat is out of there. And there we go, the deep dash wall standing three. Dapper chooses not to go for the heat burst until later on, and I think they got it here, Spirit. Damn, that combo alignment? Dapper? I am a fan already. I feel like that should have been a given. Yeah. Okay, I like the blue suit here. The, uh, that's the mighty fine coach you got there. You got to start off with the hell sweep. If you go through a whole game and you don't hell sweep, that makes them think that you're not gonna. And both of them have learned that lesson very well, apparently. Yeah, we're not gonna double down on sweep. Scan switching up immediately from the low to the mid after that CD 1 plus 2. And Raccoon immediately put on the pressure, doubling up the electricity, and telling me that I got a CD 1 plus 2 also. Oh, the unique get up into the dive kick was working, but Scant is losing a lot of health. Scant, please don't die with heat. You can't do this. This is not something that you do in round one. Yo, the sidestep left was able to be able to evade the health sweep. I love it. And that is the that is the area to step the health sweep. Usually it is all left, but there are some tools for double gen that will that will equip that. Wall standing two, as I'm sure we were about to see right there. Scamp was literally in the middle of wall standing two, but it whipped. And then the up for the Samsara getting into that stance to go up in their fly, and they are flying into the other side of that wall. And to the morning crawl, flying away to the left side, and Corpse Thrust to stop the flash combos. But Ooh. Raccoon telling that he is absolutely filled with static after this electric, putting Scamp all the way to the wall and taking him down. Two rounds to none for Raccoon. Bro, that wall combo ender is nasty. He just... <laughs> oh my god. But unfortunately, the case K there, getting the off axis down forward 1-2, not connecting in the combo. That is tragic. Didn't they buff that move? I am not sure, actually. Oh, they did. But you calling it the case K is criminal because it's true. But the dagger by it's... scans... But by, by two back threes to get the first round. But Raccoon closing out the distance into the forward four two, the devil's paw into the abolishing paw afterwards. Oh yeah, he's trying to go for the classics, the electric into demon paw, but Gauntlet is not following for it. Double down the gauntlet, goes to the morning crow after the one, but Raccoon immediately breaks away the obliteration. We got that Kamehameha way of level one going on here, not charging it up all the way. Scant's now tying up the round cap with inconsiderate Raccoon. Rack, maybe you're gonna need to consider a different strategy. Down back three into the wall setting one, but Raccoon was ready for the hell sweep because that's what they've been definitely doing the round start a lot of times. Putting next to the uh, defense, but Scant, Samsara, able to fly out of the trouble. Y'all are crazy out there in the chat. Chance also being crazy here with the sidestep left, but unfortunately not getting the heat burst. No, sir, you're not gonna keep me at this wall. The upward four whiff there? What? And the flash combos were able to recover enough to get the whip punish. 30 seconds left. Down for one plus two, but Raccoon was ready for the evasive launcher. Ops out for the armor. 
And guess what? That armor actually adds so much more insurance policy because it'll cover every single area. But with Scans waking up with that move, puts him into a tornado flip situation. Also was pretty close into the fence, a breakable fence to extend the damage. Well done by Rakzuya to, uh, to realize the spatial awareness of what he can do. That's the thing that separates the high level players from the intermediate and advanced, right? Is that spatial awareness, that game sense, knowing exactly what's possible and what's not possible at any given moment. And consider a raccoon definitely has lots of opportunities to show off his experience in that way. Oh, both with the trade. Down back to Scourge into the Axe Kid, but Raccoon's movement is amazing right now and able to expose the high from the electric and Raccoon punished it with the Twin Pistons. 13 frame wall standing launcher can make it very easy to be able to whiff punish those things that are nigh unwhiff punishable. Rack does get the flash punch combo after just menacingly dashing towards Scant and putting it up against the wall. Hmm. Own close with the down for one plus two, but Raccoon immediately answers back with the electric and de just destroying the health bar of Scans, activating the heat burst, adding more damage. I don't know if I like the abolishing fit there at the end for the ender. He actually gave Scans the ability to get out of there and mount his own offense. Double hell sweep. I know you're finna duck. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. And the third one as well, and the worst part of it all, Raccoon pressed it, so therefore the second hit was able to get a wall splat, and Scans realizing the pattern after the double electric, ducking it and punishing it with the wall standing too. Here comes Final the gauntlet, flash. charged it up. He sidestepped, but he couldn't get anything off of it, even though theoretically that's what you're supposed to do. Yo, he didn't get floated for that. Mm. Scans. Answering again. Look, the defense just gets solid. Another block on their ankles with the round start down back three. But Raccoon also blocking their ankles and blocking the Scourge. Ooh, there is the Demon Steel pedal. We're going through that wall. I'm pretty sure we got ourselves a tornado still that we can rock. Can we get over to that other wall? Not quite. And again, Rack not getting the sidewalk. Unfortunate. Is left the way to walk that? I, I would think that you should be able to walk in any direction considering he just charges the damn thing up and shoots straight at you, but you know, what do I know? Oh, the, the back two, three to close it out and scans. Very smart to use that move because that move is minus 13. However, with scans being on heat, he's able to make it safe after the heat dash. Well done by scans to even up the round one to one. So maybe what's happening there in the final flash situations, the gauntlet, Kamehameha, whatever the hell we like to call it, maybe Rack should be pressing in that situation. Because if I can see the animation of your sidewalk and there's that much time, there must be enough time for you to do something like a down four two, maybe a couple of jabs. I think he might high crush throughout. Is it kind of like the Ganryo? Like unblockable the spartan chino special i'm not sure but i definitely think that it's looking like uh he should be going for buttons in there instead i guess they must have accidentally chosen a stage not mm -hmm. sure or maybe he wanted to make a character switch what do you maybe. think maybe i think it was a character switch i uh, character switch a uh, stage mm. but to follow one alongside with that i think it was very smart also but with the the gauntlet punch Scans is having a good amount of range, like let's say about like range one, range two. Yeah. So with Raccoon, if he has to jab, he has to time it perfectly. But also, right. I think a good challenge tool with that would be down back one plus two. Hmm, ah, that's a slow move. That's like 24 frames or something like yeah, that. Yeah, but the hurt box is that is way bigger than jab. Hmm, what about, what about down forward one? No. No, down forward uh, one's 15 frames. Right, I know, but it's... We're talking... My move is nine frames faster than the move that you just said. Uh, What if... I think you can armor through... Oh, that's it. a good idea, actually, yeah. I'm pretty sure you can armor through it, so maybe he burst. Or, you know, if you're if you're lucky... I mean, if you're really on it, Demon Paw or Electric. Let's yeah, 4-2 could work. Yeah, well. and consider a recommend. Yeah, 4-2, the Power Crush. Pretty nice, meaty. And it's a... Sh it's a long startup as well. So 
to be really good and as an option. Let's see if we see that in this game up and coming up here. After, of course, we get this Twin Pistons punishment from Raccoon. They completely forgot the Scourge is minus 13 and Raccoon has launched punishment with that with Twin Pistons. Yup. It's definitely okay. great stuff. And then the Hell Sweeps, they consider Raccoon knew just the spacing to be able to get a wall splat on that and get a kill. Mmm, Scan is able to get electric for themselves and getting the laser cannon all the way to the wall after the flash mobile and just closing it with the back four and then the demon plot to add more layers into it with that wall splat. And notice that he's also not always fully charging it. Sometimes he's half charging it, sometimes he's barely charging it at all, sometimes he's doing the full charge. So it's really difficult to say what Raccoon should do in these situations. I really think that Scan is using that to its fullest ability. Oh no, Scans tries to wake up with the back kick, but Raccoon cuts it down with the slash kick and able to add more damage and doesn't let Scans escape. Raccoon is on set point. Round shot down 4-2. Oh, I knew it. Okay, oh, all right, it didn't God. hit though. I, I, I knew it though. Oh, he tried to do some messed up stuff with the morning crow off uh, back and the chain whiffs if you whiff that chain you are very very whiff punishable and inconsiderate raccoon is going to show you about that in the back two loops sending all the way but scans able to get the counter able to get the grab but able to get the floor break in really good position right now and to the sands and raccoon looking in trouble looking dry Looking dry, I don't know, man. This man is looking lubed up. He's got all the lotion ready for you. The four, the up four, unfortunate. He tried to go for the unblockable again. And inconsiderate Raccoon takes advantage of the fact that he did not optimize that combo. In fact, didn't get a not a piece of that combo at all. Could have gone to round five, could have gone to final final, did not though. And that is going to put the final nail in the coffin and consider Raccoon's going to move a little bit further on in our winner's side. Well done by Raccoon. Well done. Master, there is no substitution. You can never expect to see him do the same thing twice. Let's see what kind of business we got for you right here. And Ishan trying to shut it down already with the round one health sweep. Hmm, EWHD goes to the 3-4 plus frames and immediately go into the counter hit sweep. Mm, sir, 3-1, can he get a realignment? Yes, he can. I don't really understand this game and how sometimes it puts you perpendicularly with the wall after you splat with it, but you know, it's what it is. Uh -oh. Hey guys, spin is so broken, right? Look how Doom with Goody just lost 10 health and he ate an entire combo for it. It's oh, so that broken. I mean, that's his fault. He pressed after that 4 4 2. It ain't, you know, it ain't Yoshi, it's him. He's the one pressing, Tony. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Do with Hoodie always believes in back one, but that move is it's so fickle. Nice running threes here in Ishan. Of course, running the key first. No punish. And here comes the flashing steel counter hit. Gotta finish it off with that 4 4 2 just frame and sit on him, of course. Yeah, quick round to get it back by uh, dude with Hoodie. Small hiccup in the first round, but not a problem. Ishan closing out some distance and put on the plus chains. Getting some knowledge checks here and there, but Hoodie able to get the flash combo, but resets it with the unblockable sword sweep. Yeah, we got to talk later about why that setup was so good for you with Hoodie to down four into flash. It's extremely good. Ishan getting the double wave into 4-4-3, four, four, catching Do with Hoodie ducking. Ducking. Oh man, that's still able to close it out, but the Hoodie unable to get the whip punish, and Ishan's gonna make him pay the price. He had full opportunity to 3 1 and get heat dash and just go places with that and get bunches of healing as well but do with hoodie getting trapped up against this wall and getting abused by these sweeps when it comes to these low sweeps hell sweeps stature kick you name it unable okay i was gonna say unable but no he was able to break the generic but unable to stop the pressure watch him for that oh my goodness dude with hoodie not beating the allegations of yoshimitsu players not having defense tragic well, to be fair as well,
Tsunami kick. When you block it, it's hard to realize that it's launch. You just jab out. <laughs> it no. doesn't. It really is a move that looks like that is like minus eleven or minus. But he 12. delayed the second hit. Okay. Yes. That too. That too. If he really are, did delay it. If you are a person that has played this game for more than a year, you know that you can launch that move. And Dude with Hoodie is definitely in that realm of personality. He definitely has played this game. It's like not launching Flash Punch. It's like one one two. You block it and you get a one one two punish back. You know you're not supposed to do that. All I'm saying is I believe in my way and my man do with hoodie, but he need to lock in. And we'll see what kind of adjustment that hoodie is gonna make here on the second game. We're going to Seaside Resorts, one of the best stages out here. Ooh, we got the original beach theme out here. Let's go. Do with Hoodie using the down back four, getting a couple of extras. He's trying to get that flashing steel counter hit quite a bit. And there it is. After finally making Ishan block a couple of them, made him set still for it and got sword sweep samurai cuttered. We're gonna get the full side for the final round, I'm calling it. But Hoodie finally able to get a dominating round and getting the lead for the first one. Unable to get the whip punish for 442, but able to get the grab out of the uh, out of the whip punish and we're gonna add more damage after that flash and steal yeah you definitely do not want to be able to get up after that grab you get hit by the gahos in cd1 see with hoodie got ishan at the wall ishan trying to go for the abolishing fist counter hits might die with he doesn't get the electric like they tried for last time however oh! again catching dude with hoodie ducking that must be what the d stands for dude with hoodie ducking Dang, that was insane. Ishan able to add so much aura after that wave of wave catches Hoodie ducking. And the pressure, the vortex is starting and it's getting thunderous. Speaking nice step. Wish, lightning along with that thunder. Ishan getting stepped on the opposite side of what you would normally see. And do with Hoodie, I think, getting himself another nice wall splash. Back turn mix. Hello. That was sick. Oh, also this low parry is sick. Ishan trying to fight out of it. And getting the Dragonfly mix as well. But the three tilde four able to escape the catastrophic possibility when Ishan active in the heat. Thankfully, no burst. The helicopter kick, one of Yoshimitsu's best moves, best approach to his best shoot, one of his top five moves, period. And Ishan having the long range knowledge of exactly where the tip of his toe is to be able to catch dude with hoodie with these coil sweeps is just putting in so much work. And the hell sweep to even up the round. We have ourselves another set point versus survival point. Let me try for back one again, of course, getting beaten by Jab. You knew that that was gonna happen. Down four into sweep when you're in no sword stance. Ishan says, you are minus four after that. How dare you try to press buttons on me? Dude with Hoodie did not go for the tried and true flash track. My man with the big dick energy with the mirror match. Let's go. Hey, what is this outfit, Danny? Danny, oh, what the Danny. hell is this? Danny, no. This is a little bit too far, my man. <laughs> All right, you know what? I never thought I would say this, but you know, Broken, you got it, man. Go ahead, slam him down for this one. This is almost as bad as the Dragonov customs you see. Uh, and the Dragonov customs, the Brian customs, this is up there too. D -d 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 -oh. I don't even, I don't even, I don't even know what to say. This is, this one is hard to endure. Yikes! Hey, broken, getting the top kick punish on that whiff right there, getting slammed down into the corner. Ivo is working it. Oh, I love fun. these names. Ch Church and State. I love this. This is so amazing. <laughs> Watch how they're using the down forward three to see if they can get a hit confirm and get a wall splat. Wait, it says State and Church. Oh, Lucas did it. I thought it was I thought it was chat. No, Lucas actually did it. <laughs> the goat. Oh, speaking of the goat, Ivo showing up. Letting you know whose character you're really on right there. Oh no. Oh, you now got it. You got it. 
That's a that's gonna kill, right? 100%. It's 100% gonna kill. 10 seconds left, but it did not even matter. Hey, broken. Tells you, hello, I'm two rounds up. Church is up to zero. Yeah, hey, broken showed just a little bit too much of that running two on approach. So now Ivo is gonna have to make the most of this interaction because you know the next time it's not gonna be running two. He's gonna go for a dash block, running four, something like that. It's gonna change up. They both go for the stubborn Shoryuken, and unfortunately, it ain't no anti airs here. Hey, Broken's really finding so many openings with that low heat smash. Ivo looking in trouble. He's he's gone, but has a lot of great health. 30 seconds left to play. They will not get the wall split, but the position is still on their favor. And he has the starburst as well. He tried to go for the running two, but Broken was able to stuff it with the sidewalk. He spends the starburst. Hey, Broken gets the vanishing storm into the lows. And that's a no round brown. It, yeah, it really is a no round brown. Hey, Broken tells Trump, you really want to build that wall, but your back is up against the wall every single round at every single moment. Ibo, what is your response back? Please pick a different custom, my bow. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that really caught me off guard, and I was—it was, was kind of hard to comment. <laughs> I, I was like, "What the?" What? I was so shocked that Danny would pull that off. <laughs> I am too, bro. But you know, he knows how to get people's goats. He knows how to get them all hot and bothered. Let's see if he chooses to switch it up. Okay, please tell me that you have. All right, I'm waiting for the Joe Biden. I'm waiting for Victor to be Joe Biden. Wow. All right, it's not. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That could be Joe Biden in a different universe. Let's be fair. A very <laughs> different universe. Let's be real here. Sleepy Joe has waken up. He chose violence. Sleepy Jack right here. Or the naked snake. Ibo showing out. Ooh, and getting hit with a 2 1 2. And hey, Broken is doing really good at making Ibo duck and getting him with the Starburst Shoryuken. Yeah, especially after that sidestep for pressure. He's putting Ibo into a 50 50 mix. He had to guess, but unfortunately, he was caught ducking and got hit with the Italian uppercut. And the double back threes to add more stabs into the body. Hey, Broken, extending the lead. That's right, get those punishes. Ivo now trying to go for some of those dashes and get into Haybroken's face. Being very active right now, and unfortunately, that activity got him put into the home. Okay, I'm back for first counter hit of the night for Ivo at least. And this is gonna be a lot of damage. Doesn't finish it with the up one plus two, I am sure. Hey, Broken has got a long way to go, but he does have the gray life to deal with it. And all of the resource has rage, has heat, has a starburst. This man is stacked, but he's able to utilize it though. With punishes that, and Ibo will not make him eat the plate, but make him drop it. One, right, hey, two, Broken one. got the got the 1995 middle school, the get up in your face and put your hand back and face protruding. What are you gonna do, bro? Hit me, bro. Okay. Mm. I'm uh, not the one. Yeah, he's just not getting the spacing right all of a sudden. Hey, Broken is not being able to deal with the back dashes on this bigger stage. Both of them on heat. Hey, Broken, first one to spend it out, but still has Starburst. The pressure. Three while running threes, but will not duck on the fourth one. Eyeball, no heat, but rage on hand. No, not the throw, not the throw. Cause he was like, I'm not finna duck. You can't make me duck. My health is not low enough for me to duck. And he was able to beat that barrage, but not breaking the throw is tragic. Just one, two, two. On the back turn, it has a little bit more combo. While running two, adding the plus frames, but hey, Broken is not a budget at all. Not even back dashing, not even sidestepping. He just wanna stick to defensive options right now. He delayed that string quite a bit. Ivo was able to interrupt himself. He is in. He goes for the down two heat dash, spends that, delays the string, and hey, Broken is now in heat. This is some rough stuff. All the while standing one, not getting launch punish. Heat dash, but Ivo tried to challenge it, but Broken was ready and faster. Unable to even up the round and hey broken sends Ibo to winners. Yes, it is So we have a top 48 qualifier match here 
and this is gonna be a brawl. You know my man Code Red gotta come strapped with the bucket hat as well. Hey Dash with the old school Tekken 6 costume, the Tekken Force outfit, and he's gonna get a little bit of force on the end of this Tekken dojo when he gets hit by this wall. Oh, Code Red didn't go for the hard stuff, tragic. Yeah, and that's gonna pay the price because Code Red was trying to get the huge call it afterwards, but K-Dash was ready and get the counter hit sweep. And continuing on the pressure and has a really good life lead. Code Red only has rage, but no heat. A little bit too much of the Lionheart stance back there. It was a little bit predictable, huh? Yeah, especially with the round start Lionheart uh, back suede launcher. Yeah. Code Red was really relying throughout the entire match, but now he's adding a little bit of breaks now. Trying to get that counter hit, but K-Dash was crushing almost every jab out there, yep. especially with that orbital heal. That was a down forward one that it crushed right there. The orbital is super good at doing that. If you guys have ever played against Lars, I'm sure you've had that moment. There's the plasma cutter down back four. Oh, the snake charmer, but the off axis. Tries to double down the snake charmer. It does get connected and going from the snake and showing how sharp the fangs are after that sonic fang. And does it again. Even that weird interaction of the axe is just not working out. But this interaction definitely isn't weird because Code Red catches K Dash overstepping with his back swing. They got another one with the Lionheart, too. Yes, sir. Getting clinched. Nice break right there. Rocket punch, though, and is going to get this whole wall. Fight back here, but Code Red not letting go at all and closes it with a perfect after the forward forward too. Neo Pluridan, thank you so much for the contribution of $57.50. We appreciate you so, so much. Yo, Hope you're enjoying this. Appreciate. Hell yeah, much appreciated. Code Red with the wall standing ones here and Kadash not letting up, but Code Red knows that those Lars players like to spin out of there and just come right back in with those advancing high attack to be able to get floated. Oh, dude, the back one catches the jump, and K-Dash unable to continue the pressure. Now he has to guess 50-50, unable to do it, and Code Red getting the guaranteed heat dash afterwards to close out the set, uh, close out the match 3-1. to one. That was a rough decision right there, because if you break the, the two option, then you're going to get wall splat in that situation, I'm pretty sure. And if you break the one, obviously, you saw there that you are going to be able to get hit by the Sonic Fan guaranteed, which in this case, he had heat. It was really difficult to figure out which would have gotten Code Red more reward there, and he had just enough space to kill. Oh, my man, NYC Playboy 78 thank you so much for the sub for 40, excuse me, 14 months. I can do math. I have a master's degree in mathematics education. What do you think it was that K-Dash faulted on in that last game? Battle. He just overextended too many times. There was a lot of things that he needs to realize that Code Red is pressing a lot. Like, just not letting K-Dash bre uh, breathe at all. So K-Dash, you got to try to find the bricks and then press the acceleration back again. Mm, that was nasty right there. K-Dash with the cancel out of the silent entry, or limited entry rather. And Code Red was just like, you know what? Dunk on him. Come on and slam. Welcome to my camp. Fight out, Gun goes for the low, Code Red get, just extending this lead convincingly. Oh my god! Jaw Code breaker. Red, Jesus! Yeah, Seeing Red right after that back one. All the yes. way to the wall. Nice, the right weave. Unfortunately, not getting the hit confirmability on the end of it. He does not heat dash after the Sonic Fang. Very interesting. Ooh. Tries to go for another Snake Charmer, but K-Dash doesn't want the snake. He brings in the dragon after the dragon's breath, and that's how we even up the round. Yeah, that Arc Blast was sending electricity through us out here in the commentary booth as well as through Code Red. Let's see what Code Red can do in the Lionheart stance. No punish on the Billy Club. K-Dash is getting punished himself, though. You see Code Red is like playing the spacing game a little bit more. Oh man, he got caught pressing. He didn't duck the third string, and Code Red's gonna take advantage of that, putting themselves in heat and putting them in a really good wall positioning. He got hit by the low and then pressed on the third hit of the wild man. That is wild, man. There's the Sonic Fang into the heat dash. Goes for parry. I like it. I like it. 
Yeah, catches K-Dash, press it, tries to go for the stun gun, but K-Dash trying to add a little electricity, but Code Red immediately turning the power off. Oh, is he going to Mountain Dew it here? No, sir. Doesn't go for the fourth hit on that. That's very interesting. I don't usually see Steve players not do the fourth hit. Another great float by Code Red here. Oh, tries to go for the Snake Charmer. It's the back's way into the overhead. But Code Red extinguishing the heat with the heat dash and still putting on the pressure. 30 seconds left to play and K-Dash a little bit paused. But on Red, has heat, has everything, has all the resources. And with the punish after that Sonic Fang. Code Red went to go for down back 3-2 instead of the guaranteed stuff. Tried to get a little bit extra, and now K-Dash is not really too good about that. 14 seconds left. He goes for the G-Clef Cannon and tries to press forward with his plus 5 that he had. But he should have maybe done another G-Clef Cannon. It would have beaten the Rage Art out there. It would have beaten the Power Crush as well. But unfortunately not. He does not have the space to beat out Code Red. And the Red from his Rage Art is sending Red into his own eyes. <laughs> I do remember Joey hating that character with a passion. And then he Real. ended up playing it himself and yeah. started to mess around <laughs> with it for like a month with ICFC. Yo, look at AIM2 with the backwards cap right here showing that we got some style. Let's see how kind of style you can be after getting hop kicked in the air like that. It's Katarina. Oh, it is. Yeah, it's Katarina. Mm. I don't Unfortunately, disagree with it. Unfortunately, the existence is kind of swindling away just like the health bar because Rhythm is deleting Abe 2 in the first round. Jeez. Now, one of the things that is so good about Elisa is her back dash. You no notice that Rhythm is doing a lot of dash up down forward one to catch that back dash as well. And Rhythm is not letting Aim 2 move at all when it's back dashing or sidestepping because that down back 1 plus 2 is doing so much work. What a sidestep duck. Okay, standing forward, trying to make Rhythm stop with his pressure, his sidestepping, his down forward one, but it is just not working. Rhythm is just being suffocating with shades of Olsan. Nice sidestep, the one, one plus two by AIM2, tries to go for the Unassault Heat Engager, but no luck so far, but the positioning is definitely in AIM2's favor right now. Not so much after the chainsaw. I see a lot of people not blocking that move, that surfboard. Oh my god, Aerial in the sky. Oh, why didn't that work? Well, it's just unfortunate. So confusion will it be able to hit yourselves, you know, in Pokemon games. But so far, it seems to be in Tekken terms also because Riddle, able to bring it all the way back, has rage 20 seconds, puts aim to into the rage as well. But the back dashing able to escape it. And as a Stoutland, closing it out by getting the shot, uh, the shoes shined up. Aim 2 redeeming themselves after not punishing the 1-2-2 two, two from Rhythm. Getting a nice wall combo here after that one started up. I'm sure that they're liking this momentum, but Rhythm says, Boy, get that ass out of here. I do not like having my back to a wall. No, no punish on that. That's tragic. Both of them, their heat, they're, it's gone. But Rhythm still continuing this pressure. Not letting aim to breathe at all. Mm. Sidestep Duck was able to beat the hop kick. I like that, but they were not able to get full launch, unfortunately, Spirit. Mm, interesting rhythm to try to challenge that, but aim two was ready to challenge back, and that's how they secure to match points. Aim more that backdash and aim two finally decides to press instead of backdash and rhythm just knew it apparently and that's like the third time that we've seen rhythm be able to duck that string and get a punish off it but unfortunately sidestepping too much and can't get a single combo sweet coming in rhythm trying to step out of there but aim two was ready but unfortunately not ready for, to get hit by the heat smash but the heat burst into destruction stands getting you the walls what? by the rhythm to the Rage Art, but the question is, will this kill? No, no, not with that scaling. Okay, what's AIM2 gonna do? Got the 13 health back, have plenty of space for it, and then the Cybernetic Ballerina. I really did not think that Rhythm was gonna lose that game. But oof, don't say it's over when it isn't over. AIM2. Definitely known for this heat burst destruction stance switch ups. 
really showed us the full potential what it can do. That was sick. That was so Dude, sick. Being with your back to the wall against Rhythm and going, I think I'm going to do this really battle. big recovery transition and then somehow being able to survive it with the sidestep out of the dual boot. Man, that was beautiful. Let's see how much momentum can be carried over. Aim 2 sitting comfortably with one run after that very, very important comeback. And we'll see how Rhythm's going to make the adjustment here in the Coliseum of Fate. Okay, goes with a quick round. Rhythm getting the sidestep left. It's working out for him. The Hornet Strike taking away all recoverable health. That didn't even exist. Let's see if we get some heat burst going on. He didn't duck it! He, did, he looked right into it, Tony! Looking into the eyes of the devil. You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? It looks like there is a full moon out tonight. Aim 2 showing their ass out here, and Rhythm just staring right into it. Aim 2 is the one staring right back, especially getting hit that while running too. Rhythm on fire, nicely done to block the destruction down too. Able to get a Wasa any 14. Mm -hmm. There is 1-2-2 two, two yet again. The first two hits with, but the third hit was the one that you really wanted to connect. Got those wall standing threes. You know you're going to get surfed on over there. 30 seconds left, but it doesn't even matter. The rhythm quickly closes it up with a down forward one and quickly evens up the round. Another engager round start for rhythm immediately goes oh, for the guard break. Doesn't do it for the second time. Interesting. Usually we know him for just abusing it. But yeah. Rhythm changing up the momentum, changing up the pace, and changing up the combo route as well. How do you still have the ability to do while standing threes? All it the way to the wall. Here. Oh, he the didn't smooth. wake the, the he didn't get the delay for the low wall splat, but I thought that was dead already. I thought it was gonna be dead regardless of a delay or not. Double up the slide. Does it go for a triple? Having a wall standing one, aim two gets the sidestep but doesn't get anything off of it. Goes for the chop, immediately goes for the heat smash. Interesting. 40 seconds left to play. Chainsaws catches the power run and rhythm tries to crush it again with the hop kick. But aim two crushes the dreams of the hop kick and able to get a launch for themselves. Aim two is looking comfortably right now to even up the score. But rhythm stops the offense, stops the heat smash, and puts a cool stop sign with the rage art she's aerial though that's gonna make it so that she takes less damage aim two no longer has heat like they had before what a sidewalk but even though they were back turn they could still get the block hello i'm confused by that you know he had enough windows to turn around let's listen man when you're feeling you got the instinct you got the instinct we blocking them lows. We don't want to get hit by the destruction too. My man Syndromer out there in the chat. That's the homie right there telling us that Rhythm, like Syndromer the musician, knows how to change his rhythm up real well. And we're seeing that quite a bit. But really, I think right now, I'm seeing some really good blocks from Rhythm, especially on those destruction stance down twos that has really been doing a lot of mileage for him. Well done. Well done for Rhythm is just staying composed, staying comfortable, staying confident. Can I, our first top 48 winners brings it all to the distance into the third game. Mm, okay, nice. We get a little bit of punish off of that. I think they were going for a wall standing one too, but you know, is what it is. Aim 2 almost getting the back dash back 4 4, but didn't let it rip. And aim two, she tries to rip out the third string, no delay, but Rhythm was absolutely ready for, for every single option. He's doing moves that don't really have a lot of whiff recovery to them, as we can see right there. Whiffing intentionally into the hop kick, very interesting. Yeah, that spacing game, Rhythm is perfectly playing. She goes for the heat smash, but runs away out of destruction's evasiveness. I know you did not think that he was finna duck at that wall right there. I guess he could have, because there is an unblockable high that could maybe make Rhythm want to duck, but he had way too much health for it, I guess. Not just that, but AIM2 has successfully landed those two specific knees 
twice, but Rhythm doesn't want to get hit the third time. No launch, tragic. Aim 2 once again hitting him with the ballerina spin, but Rhythm using that fantastic power crushing heat engager. No, he does it again! The whiff into the destruction stance, heat burst. Doesn't duck the, the third string, doesn't release it. This time he does, but the timing is not in Rhythm's favor, and Aim 2 closes it with the screwdriver. So difficult to whiff punish Elisa Chainsaws. We can definitely see that, especially when they're high. They've got a lot of activity. Let's see if Rita can stay active and catch Aim to move. And yes, they do. That wall standing one counter hit, able to get the heat engager guaranteed. And Rhythm finding its opening, breaking the chin. And Aim to talking with the Rose Stones in the garden, but unable to break it. Rhythm is on set point. Yo, that unblockable, just getting the tornado on aim two immediately is blossoming. And once again, the destruction down two getting blocked. Rhythm showing out and aim two pressing a lot of those boot stance options that are getting them killed. These crucial blocks, especially the down three, able to get a full launch punish from wall to wall. Another guard break and we're going to take it away. Gray health, no recoverable health, but has all the resources. But rhythm, just like the playstyle was perfect. That comeback was perfect. Rhythm's playstyle was perfect. On and appealing, his... defeating Code Red to oh, that's a tough matchup. Steve Fox versus Link. But oh, next man, up, look we at got these it. Customs. Bro, gaming on you with the Q custom. He's with the Q. Oh that's man, so are we gonna get to see three games? We gotta see him strike three times, dog. Bro, I think this is the best Victor Custom I've ever seen. This is so sick. And this combo is going to be even deadlier. Putting on heat as well. They're going to be on fire. Castle Tommy just looking at him. Just slowly getting their health deteriorated. But good amount of gray health and a good amount of heat is left. But Game and Anya might not give them a chance to even utilize it. Jermanji in the chat saying, who's Q? Oh my goodness. Go do your third strike Street Fighter homework, my dude. Let's see if Pastel Tommy's done his homework to be able to get over the stance mix-ups from Game & Anya here. Look at the spacing. Game & Anya is totally fine being out at range 3, range 4. Mm -hmm. Also, MYK in the chat. Hope you were doing That's the goal. fantastic. You have one of the greatest of all time. And he's going to steal this custom. Take that as an honorary... Uh, you know, credibility. Game and Anya getting past El Tommy to go already almost to that wall. Running two, of course. And yes, past El Tommy knows that you can get launched for that. And I know you wasn't finna finish that string. You ain't got it like that. Hold it on heat, but past El Tommy, first one to spin it out. Tries to go for the, the hop kick, but Game and Anya was ready. Putting past El Tommy on heat, and the time is dwindling down. Quickly, and Game and Anya has such a good lead, but Castle Tommy finds an opening with the with the electric and is gonna activate the rage art. This is gonna be so smart because it's gonna take away gray health and also is gonna stop the time. And remember that you get 13 health back from doing the rage art. So all he really needs to do is get his spacing, chill out. He chooses not to do that, just go straight for the running three into the same time mix. I respect the hell out of it. Castle Tommy with no time remaining, able to find the perfect comeback. And Game and Anya is not gonna take that lightly, but Castle Tommy is ready to challenge and interrupt it with the flash combo. Yeah, like the down two. He doesn't go for the heat dash afterwards, unfortunate. Again, no heat dash after the heat engager. Very interesting. Castle Tommy is working on trying to get in there, but the expulsion, the Excalibur. Finding the sword and putting it into the stone of art inside of Pastel Tommy. Cool, 442 Zen 3. First one to be on fire, and Pastel Tommy is definitely on fire. Heating this matchup and getting the stone head. He's got a couple of interactions left to even it up one, uh, two to two. What a oh, block no. on the three, but doesn't get no the launch. launch! That's tragic. Pastel Tommy, you got to finish your food right there. Oh no. He's coming for the toes. He's coming for the toes again. Oh no, this is this is this is bad. This is gonna be disastrous. But Pastel Tommy escapes it, escapes the calamity, and starts over into final round. Okay, once again, already heating up out here. We got a fever, and the only prescription is more Pastel Tommy Sentai stance. Nice 1-1. One, one. Can Game and Anya get out of here and be able to get some of this heat expended? No. 
What a break on this oh, counter hit through. Came in on you, able to get the low heat smash. It has the range. But pass on Tommy, goes for the armor and pushes them away even further. Swagger Dagger gets debated and Passel Tommy finds the opening to get the Heat Engager. 30 seconds left to play. Passel Tommy look, uh, sitting comfortably with the life lead. As running two, getting the pot shots as well from long range. Once again, Gaming Anya feeling really comfortable at that long. I know you didn't just try the big cake energy on my homie Passel Tommy. No, not getting the execution is tragic and the pillar of fire totally erupting Passel Tommy's momentum. That right there, I gotta say it. Skill issue. That's a damn shame. Tony, you realize that Game and Anya did the double sword sweep once, right? Mm -hmm. Got blocked. No lunch punish. I do. I do Ga know that. Ga you realize what happened afterwards. Game and Anya kept using that move. T Tommy was just like got hit. Got hit by it. Therefore. Game and Anya builds up the confidence to keep using that move because it ain't broken. He's not gonna fix it. No, sir. He's gonna keep doing it. Round one. Oh, I am loving this. We got some Cyberpunk 2020 million. I don't know what the name of that game is called. I'm sorry, I'm a fraud. Pastel Tommy trying to use the down forward one and push Game and Anya over to that wall, but the sidestep actually gets the map advantage in their favor instead. Again, no heat dash. This is where to activate the heat, but no great hell to recover, but has the potential to, to chip out so much damage to even up the round. Ooh. I'm so happy that that doesn't give you a combo afterwards. It's nasty. 442 is able to make the down back four with get punished, even at that long range. All right, chat. It's, it's the Hotline Miami motorcyclist. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Chat is upset. I mean, we gotta find everything, every reason to be upset about this. Be fair here. You're right. <laughs> Ooh, oh, what man. a block from the back four. And Daz Tommy able to grab him and get the engager afterwards and grabs it again for the stone head. Yeah, Game on you a little bit too greedy with those down back fours. Game on you does have the life lead though, and it's totally fine doing six KBDs in a row. And Pastel Tommy is like, you know what? I like you having yourself over next to that wall, but Game and Anya says, I like you not breaking them throat. I see Don the, uh, the block the low high string. Pastel has a pixel in the dream, and that is all they have. And wow, what a dream they lived in because they got the good ending with that. Setting themselves up to even up the score, possibly make it a one-to-one, -one, but Game and Anya is not going to go down without a fight. Okay. Yeah, 100%. Get them over to that wall. Pastel Tommy trying to get this no-round brown, but it's like, nah. Not looking like it's happening. 14 second perfect for Game and Anya. Alright, now this time Game and Anya is putting on the pressure. A lot of the down twos, but then going back into that old stuff, yo, just barely whipping the standing two. Didn't go into any of the rest of the stream because they knew they had the worst spacing possible. Pastel Tommy with the Pastel Perfect Electric. Yeah, taking out the bakery out of the oven. He's looking crisp and Pastel Tommy serving up another dub here, evening up the game. One, two, one. Didn't even need to turn on the oven for that one. Cooked them in real time, roasting them with the fists instead. That one was a very different game. You think it was the smaller stage that really did it? No, even though if a smaller stage or not, gaming on you was there. The pacing was definitely different. Definitely giving a lot more respect, especially with the multiple back dashes. Yeah, definitely. Like five, six back dashes. Yeah, it didn't matter how big the stage was. And we didn't really even see that much wall pressure versus Pastel Tom with Pastel Tommy. Pastel Tommy tried to get some wall pressure going on with Game and Anya, but the lateral movement and the grabs actually kind of neutralized it. But descending into the subconscious, this right here is going to be important to figure out who is going to get those grabs and who's going to be able to break those floors. Is that the mask? Oh, never mind. He's gonna get masked up after that. That hop kick. Hold on, real quick. Hold on, hold on. Let me shut up real quick. Not hold stain the Ipkis. No, sir. No way that's stain the Ipkis. Oh, but I got a low heat smash also, and but 
Mine's better because that's gonna break the floor regardless of the layers or not. Pastel Tommy has taken the lead. Let's go. Pastel Tommy getting interrupted here by the Crybaby Sophia string. Not getting those back one, two, and not getting ducked for it. Uh, now they're saying it's a nightmare painting, but they're also saying it's the mask. At this point, we're, we're, we've caught ourselves a new fight in chat. Uh, I just have to say, I have seen that movie more, movie time, more times than I can say. Pastel Tommy is finna watch a couple of these right here, though cinematic this combo was. Another low heat smash by Gaming on ya! Pastel Tommy tries to close out the range with a 4 4 2, but Gaming on ya was on stance, was ready to retaliate. Even up the round here, one to one. Top 48 winners. This is to qualify to get into top eight winner side qualifiers, if I remember correctly. To fight against rhythm. Also, Tommy's not trying to press too often, but finally chooses to. And Game and Anya was ready for the Sentai stance high. And we got a heat burst coming. A heat wave out here in the desert. You expect it, but you're not looking forward to it. Sheesh! And we got the heat from the Blicky as well. Hacking that heat. Yeah, he's got that steady aim, but he's got to try to find that critical hit because Game and Anya is on set point. But Pastel Tommy, he's got that Juggernaut, got that bulletproof vest and able to block the down back four. A heat engager whiffing Pastel Tommy going for the Hell Axle and gets a heat engager down forward. One, one plus two gets interrupted. Yes, you can. Still heat dashes, goes for that same option, not breaking the throw, and that's gonna kill. That was a huge amount of damage. Final, final round, Spirit. Our first one in Pastel Tommy stops the momentum. Gaming on was thinking it's gonna go for the Zen 3 to get that Watt standing in one punish. Game and Anya trying to keep that spacing tight and deep dash on the shining and your life bar is shining as well but not in the way that you would like it to be. It's getting dimmer and dimmer but the clock is winding down to 30 seconds past all time. He gets caught by the explosion and Game and Anya made quite the impact on the ender because Game and Anya was definitely gaming and will be gaming on later. To fight against Rhythm for top eight winners side quality. King Ray Jr., eight time Tampa Never Sleeps champion, the current record holder for Tampa Never Sleeps Tekken edition, and of course, the Mexican Matador, Divine Exorcist. Yeah, King Ray Jr. trying to extend, you know, the lead and add up another W into the TNS resume. But he's got to go against Divine Exorcist in this top 8 qualifiers. And Divine Exorcist, looking divine after that low parry. Getting the combo as well and extending it as well. Jesus. Oh, and speaking of exercisers, King Ray Jr. using the 4 one plus 2, which of course we know is the name of the exerciser from Asuka. Getting a lot of mileage from there because of the huge life lead swing that the heat engager gave them. Yeah, Junior just standing there letting the heat burn out and Divine Exorcist and letting themselves burn out because he finds the opening with the Beyblade Ripper. 15 seconds in, it uses the Starburst on the arrow. Interesting, and that's gonna what? cost them because Junior gets the whirlwind kick counter hit and kicks him to the curb to get the first round. I was like, oh, he's gonna do 4 4 1 plus 2, or running 1 plus 2, or forward 1 plus 2, or any of those that Nani Augusto would use. And King Ray Jr. is like, no, I'm gonna use this move that you almost never see me use and still get the launch on it. Nasty. He uses the whole character, just like this running 1 plus 2, which gets the immediate tornado. <laughs> Junior tried to get the evasive property with the side step to engage her, but Divine Exorcist has something else in plan which is the sidestep down black one plus two. But Junior, even with his back against the wall, he's still gonna answer back with that back four. Tries to extend the combo with the heat first, but will not get the spike. But Junior, knowing doing what Junior does, which is not pressing on the brakes. That move is so good. It basically does so much pushback that you're definitely not going to be able to steep, keep at the wall. And then also apparently it puts you super negative as well. Cheap. And it's a Sabaki. This 
Jesus looking pretty good right now, but Junior up two rounds, and this could make it 3-0 after that huge opening. It's gonna close it off with a Rage Art. No. I don't think it's going to kill though. However, it will put him into a great position now because that's gonna take all the great health and he is running out also. Yeah, King Ray Jr. is definitely not going to make it so that Divine Exorcist can use that heat. Immediately goes up and running three. The Starburst Shoryuken got spent, and then the immediate button actually died because of the whiff punishment, the spacing that the Starburst Shoryuken sets you at. Just easily able to make the opponent whiff by standing still, doing nothing, and waiting for them to whiff. And what did Junior exactly after that? He jabs out. So yep. Divine Exorcist was ready for the jab check and goes for the High Crush Sky Slash Nova. Divine Exorcist able to extend the gameplay, stay alive in this game for now. And so far, he's looking pretty good trying to make this comeback. Dooms G, thank you so much for the subscription for two months on a two month streak. Hope you're enjoying this high Tekken Octane. Whoa, more sidestep two, and then the Tooth Fairy. Unfortunately, it looks like King Ray Jr. got a couple of teeth of their own getting knocked out there. I thought the Tooth Fairy was supposed to get teeth, not lose them. Wait, what? Pause? <laughs> Back three, three! It did a double axe kick. Nice, big counter hit. You don't think that I'm gonna finish this string? Oh, think again, fam. What? How did that hit? Vanishing Storm back one. Hitbox is amazingly huge. And Divine Exorcist again with the Starboard Shoryuken, but unfortunately he can't finish off the combo. He has Rage. Could have spent it in that last one to stop King Ray Jr. from having Grey Life left. He's whiffing out there, trying to make Divine Exorcist whiff. Trying to get equal, that kind of equal. 15 seconds back. One will not connect. The slash kick will pierce on through and make Jr. Go even further. It is one to zero, and that is quite the dagger of a finish for only match one. Man. Listen, I know what the stats say. I know what it says when we look at eight time TNS winner versus Divine Exorcist, which I believe he has not won a TNS yet. However, this game is close as hell. Round one. Fight. What a top top eight wall party going on right now. We're gonna continue on. No, no breaks. Divide exorcism. You can see how he's abusing the plus frames. King Ray Jr. shimmying. He's not doing a lot of back dash, just a lot of forward, back, forward, back, really you know, standing his ground. Down back one plus two, the Italian uppercut will get chipped out by the exerciser. Junior able to regain so much health and puts him into a great position into this combo. Sidestep two able to get the side wall splat. And Junior noticing the range, how he couldn't get a tornado flip, goes for the rage arc, but that also gets whiffed. Divine Exorcist has a chance to make the comeback. Rare miss from King Rage Art Jr. right there, not having it connect, but kept it tight, kept it together. Pack one, catches Junior ducking. Mm, damn, yikes, the full forward forward, that is giving you a guaranteed 12 frame afterwards. King Ray Jr. says, you know what, take your couple of jabs. I do not care, beautiful sidestep, but unfortunately was not able to get out of the way that he breaks. Mm, the nosebleed by Junior, such an important mix up right here, because that's gonna set him up for the heat dash into the combo from one wall to another and sets him up for the kill as well. Junior is running away in the second game, trying to book themselves into top eight winners. This has got a huge start here with a back four start, but will not get the continuation into the wall break. But the low Sabaki, are you kidding me, Junior? It's a kick Sabaki right there. Divine Exorcist went for the back four, and that is, once again, the strength of that move how great it is, especially when they're against the wall. Even if he didn't get a Sabaki, he would've got wall crushed there. What a duck, into the wall standing one, three, into the ball, yeah. Oh man, what a no round brown we saw right there from King Rage R Jr. He's moving on to top 16, where he's trying to make it in a winter side. I was like, where is he going with this? I was like, I can't help you with it. Yeah. But 
where, where are we going? Because we're going to another top eight qualifier, and we could say that this is a classic. Joe now, Crush versus the, just yeah. Sandy. We mentioned earlier that Joe Crush not a big fan against playing King, especially in online situations, it's really difficult to break his throws. And you know just Sandy finna throw you, but Joe Crush definitely not letting just Sandy get started and kind of throwing him up against this wall. It's with a generic grab, but doesn't get a connection. But just Sandy tries to get away there with the Jaguar step and Joe Crush with the heat burst on tack. With Jaguar step happening, that's going to cause King to be in an aerial property. So therefore, he's going to get spiked down to the ground. Look at each other standing in that closed space. Gets the big boot. Uh, step on him. Nothing guaranteed afterwards. Just wait to see what Joe Crush wants to do. He chooses to wake up backwards. Nice punish on the program. Dump a cup with the back one, two. Just Sandy getting the giant swing broken. And Joe's like, you know what? I, if you want to think about throwing me, just know I'm a duck. I got these wall standing ones and these timing buttons. That, that wall standing one is, I think, one of his biggest timing presses that he used. He used it a lot in Cuddle Cup when he won it last weekend. For sure. Absolutely. Just Sandy trying to answer back here. Joe Crush sitting pretty. Two rounds up. Tries to go for the armor. Tries to get the 3D engager. But Joe is just abusing these mixes. Just Sandy gets caught ducking. And Joe Crush finds a programmed uppercut. And finding the code. Finding the file location. And finding the download file. And speaking of which, just Sandy going to need to hit that JavaScript. He need to wake up. You know you're going to get hit by the down back one here. I'm sorry, it's gonna have to happen. He went for the full crouch string, you know, the Joe Crush strings instead. So my prophecy did not come to fruition, but it was a low, so I'm gonna take about 50-50 of that. <laughs> I'll take some credibility too here. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> but man, what a very, very fast 3-0 match. As what Iambic would say, they would call that a microwave match. Ooh, I like that. You know, my, you know, I'm a big alliteration fan right there. That yes. one, that one. Shout out to the Iambic. Shout out to the Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Okay. So what do you think Jasani needs to do here? He got hit by a lot of those timing reads, program uppercut, the wall standing ones. Uh, I, I, I guess we could say block more, but, you know, Joe will come up and break them toes. Just completely stomp on the paws. I'm gonna be straight up honest with you, Tony. I do not know what to do against this situation. That's in spirit. Mm. Okay, well, definitely get your whip punishes against that. I think that was a missed input because I think he tried to go for the uh, back one too. Yeah. Maybe he just wasn't ready for the down forward two right there, but he was ready to get his own down forward two combo. Unfortunately, a little bit too off axis and couldn't get the running ender. Show on point with these throw breaks. Just Sandy trying to get another uh, ooh, he's, uh, armor properties, but Joe was absolutely ready. He's the one flexing on him, and now he's the one to activate the heat and extend it all the way to the wall. He's not going to get the property, but he's got good positioning. The Mog Master seconds. is ready for you, just sitting out there in crouch. Just Sandy trying for the giant swing. Joe Crush so far has not been thrown. Absolutely ready. Just Sandy also tried to get that shove counter hit, but off the range just a tiny bit. And Joe Crush with a small opening able to get the punish. Just Sandy using the Gore Howl, the Beast Howl there. Just not. Joe, Joe's being like, you know what? Fine. Go ahead, use your armor. I'll run up, chop your toes three times in a row with the pulverizer. And he's able to get that crush with the wall standing 1-3. And we're going to bury him to the sand with the tombstone. Joe Crush is spelling rest in. But he's waiting for the piece. And he's going to get a piece of that. But just Sandy able to send him to the sky with this muscle buster. I think it's a throw. So each player has gotten thrown one time. Very nice 4-2-1. The Jaguar elbow string. Joe Crush is in danger of losing his duty brown. Yep, he do. Sandy, a crucial round up on the board. This is going to be momentum changing here. He always not finna duck that. He knows better than that. Four for neutral two, Joe Crush able to back his way out of there, get the whip punish. Sandy stepping to the right so often, but Joe's 
delaying his options, making it so that he doesn't get caught. Finally, the down back one is getting low parried by Jasandi. He let Joe get away with it for quite a bit there. He ain't gonna duck just yet. Try to get that toe kick. 25 seconds left to play. Just Sandy, both of them on heat now. He tries to get the instant shining wizard, but Joe is the first one to spend their heat. But just Sandy's meter is running out and he's unable to use it as Joe Crush kick him into the curb and pushes on through with the battery ram. Joe Crush, the dominant aura, the Mog King, your Cuddle Cup winner, will be joining alongside King. But we'll let the loser's run run its course because we're going to get back into the action here with our top eight winners qualifier, Wizzy versus P Lane. King Ray Jr. is sad to see that we've got Ling instead of Yoshimitsu. Wizzy going for the three hatchet kicks in a row, the deadly scorpion sting. That's gonna be venomous, and you know Peeling's gonna feel the poison throughout the rest of the set. Yeah, but Peeling is returning the favor with the scorpion sting of themselves, but Wizzy, their toxin is way higher after that heat smash and the venomous fang coming alongside after that string. Wizzy securing the first round in convincing fashion. Oh yeah, he's definitely not letting Peeling get away with Jack squat right now. He is continuing to stay on top of Peeling, and Peeling is saying, you know what, fine. Side step four, I'm gonna get some counter hits on you. You wanna be frame tight with me? You better make sure that you're frame tight. Yeah, and you can't do that against a player like Peeling, because Peeling is absolutely ready to try to make that comeback, but Wizzy's fundamentals right now is amazing. But Peeling's defensive option decides to wake up with violence and close it with vengeance. That hot kick, making it stick to the wall. Wizzy needing a little bit more. Dude, look at him just walking into him. This is one of the reasons that we love Machine Gun Wizzy so well. The way he uses his movement, just fantastic. Healing, though, is stopping that pressure. Wizzy would have liked to have a little bit of gray life there, but all of that life that he lost was no combos, no aerial. So he gets nothing for the heat engager other than a little bit of extra pressure. Both of them, their heat is running out. Goes for the hypnotist, but Peeling plays the spacing game and catches the bait. Peeling backflips into the action and secures the second round into match points. So that's what that Pokeball is there for. You gotta catch them all, gotta catch them slipping, I guess. Peeling again with a down back two twice in a row. Wizzy said, you know what? I think I know what you about to do. Oh, you about to get on this wall. Jeez. Yeah, Peeling wants to add Wizzy into the Pokedex entry. You know that for a fact, but he's not going down with a fight. Ignition Switch will get, get, will get whiffed, so Peeling has enough frames to activate the Heat Burst. 30 seconds in, it goes for the, uh, the Heat Dash. Sidestep back forward three, and we have a final round situation. Notice the sidestep left. This is the side that you want to be stepping versus Ling, especially when she's in back turn. Wizzy knows that well. Uh, uh. <sighs> Goes for the heat first, add more damage, add more salt to the wound. Not letting Peeling get up, he finally does so and he's gonna activate the wall jump. Able to connect and tries to go for the mistrust and that's exactly why you can't trust that move every single time. Cause Wizzy knows how to close it out with killing, with crushing, and with destroying. I gotta tell you man, you can't be just doing that stuff raw like that against my man Machine Gun Wizzy. You might get away with that earlier on in the bracket, but just running that amazingly launch punishable attack, the back turn four, uh, it, the risk is just gigantic, especially versus somebody that got the reactions like my man. That was, that was an insane match. I, I, I oof. Game two Wizzy's just so, so snappy. Peeling had some really good assumption reads, and they've worked really well. A couple of counter hits, the big old hop kicks are working. But Wizzy, look at this, the spacing and the whip punishment. He just, there's a reason that he's gotten five TNS wins and five TNS second place. Oof. What a catch here with the back four, three into the heat dash. So he's gonna get a full combo out of this. This should be enough to put Peeling into rage. Gets the map advantage here, but for how long? At what cost? Has still has heat. He still has heat. 30 seconds left to play. He wants that engager. He really wants that engager. He doesn't want to waste it. That Slash pick comes in. Oh, I definitely got hit. Because she has the empty hop low. That's a launcher. 
Willy just saying, you know what? Immediate. Hail Slicer off of that one. Two, one. Then look, Wizzy going up, closing the range, but not even pressing. She's gonna activate the heat. Well, wow. peeling, unfortunate, unable to get the whiff punish. Tragic. Yeah, that's a big whiff too as well. I would thought that Peeling was going to be able to. Both of them had got the broilers turned on. The burners are up to high. Can Peeling get that? No, Pe Wizzy chooses not to do the sidestep right. And both of them do not get a heat dash or a heat smash. Yeah, he just, just didn't feel like he needs to swing. He's in a good position right now. But unfortunately, when he tried to swing, Peeling activating the cycle bomb and gets the jump over. Will not get the launcher, but will get the generic grab incoming. And that's how Peeling... Plays the layers, plays the mind game perfectly to secure the first round into game number two. Speaking of layers, my man Wizzy putting it on like a cake in the frost peeling with this out here with the Tundra Slash. Is it coming? It's about to happen. Just a whiff punish Tundra Slash. Come on, baby. Oh, no. Ignition switch instead. I like it. Ooh. The Storming Flower will not activate the heat, but will push him away. Now this time, Peeling sidestepped and activated the heat into the heat smash. And will let Wizzy get mesmerized with the Hypnotist low. This is going to be a huge amount of damage and a huge amount of time wasted into the Yoki. Yeah, if you stay on the ground, you don't get hit by that wall standing four. But, you know, if I'm in that situation, I'm not staying on the ground. Wizzy, though, is trying to get to, so that Peeling doesn't have their ability to get this game back. Man, no punish in the hop kick? Uncharacteristic. Uh-oh. He didn't get your spirit. Yeah, immediate hypnotist too. Goes for the mid, doubles it down. Tries to go for the heat dash, but Peeling's meter will activate with the shooting star Nova. No connection, no wish. All hands, but Boozy. Back 4-3 into another Ooh. engager, but Peeling isn't afraid to throw out the hop kick. This should be killed, right? No, it's not! It's not kill! Okay. Be cool, be cool. You know what? This is all for content, of course, out here. Tampa never sleeps. We can't be going 2 0 every match out here. We gotta be able to give you something and a little bit of hesitation, something palpitating on you. I don't know, chat. What do you guys think? Wizzy or Peeling? I know you put in your votes earlier for the channel points, but I think the, the situations have changed up a little bit here, especially on that larger stage. Absolutely, and Peeling is showing no mercy, no fear. Definitely getting a little bit looser with the hop kicks. Not letting uh, Wizzy try to go for the ankles because every single hop kick that's been connected is when Wizzy tries to go for a down two. Yeah, no, that's true. Especially in those situations because, man, Wizzy, I don't know how Peeling just knows when it's his time because Wizzy seems to me like he's amorphous. He just never know when he's going to dash up on you to do nothing or when he's going to run up and get the ignition switch. Ugh, just like that one right there. Turn the lights on. Turn the heat on. Peeling tries to go for the counter heat as well. Both of them are matching their energy. But Peeling is actually trying to get some heat meter back, trying to charge up the, uh, the Hypnotist, but unfortunately unable to do it. Still has enough time to activate the heat smash. <laughs> the back three was getting ducked under right there. Maybe thinking that Peeling was instead going to go for the sidestep at a back turn. Oh my god, he just looked at it. Hypnotic indeed. Oh, you got yourself looking straight into a deer in the headlights. And Wizzy isn't taking that lightly. He is pissed. Double down two into the instant while standing two. He's got heat as well, and we're gonna spend it on the heat dash with the ignition switch. The defense though is on point. Yes, and that's how Wizzy immediately evens up the score one to one. But feeling not afraid as well because he's gonna get that counter hit while standing two. He's gonna add so much more damage. He's gonna be the first one gonna be activated on the heat. But he actually dropped the combo and tried to get a reset, but drops it immediately. Link does go for the Heat Rush, trying to keep his momentum. Wizzy's like, you know what? You're going to duck my back four. You're going to duck some of this. You're going to get hit by some of these strings. You're going to make me get you with these down forward ones. Peeling chooses to go for Hypnotist again. And oh my god, the walk into the mid. He's still trying to get that, that mix up here with the side step into the back turn. And Drill double it down with the down forward two. Fight. Peeling. Peeling is on set point to go with the top eight winner side. 
You knew it! Bro, I knew that hop kick was coming in. Wizzy was going for a couple of down twos in a row, and then P Ling was like, oh, yeah, just eat these three hits, block these three hits. <gasps> Not the Wang's waning moon. The tides are shifting so heavily, Spirit. There could be a full moon in the sky right now, but with the moon coming in, it is a sign for you to go night night because Peeling sends Wizzy to sleep, also known as the loser's bracket. And we'll be moving on to top eight winners side. <laughs> Call it, it is a classic Jack eight versus Shaheen. Here we go. No punish? Mm, Hello? One, two, one, counter hit rhythm against the first blood. And it's gonna be a huge amount of damage with great positioning here for sitting Joe first all the way to the wall. Ooh, Rhythm misses the slide after the down jab. Unfortunate. You have to actually go into the crouch walk just a little bit to be able to get it. So he just got generic down three. Difficult execution. Very heat smashy of you. Can Joe Crush run up and get the baseball slide? Nah, I guess he didn't want it. He don't want to be that kind of guy right here. Rhythm was going to expect it. He does finish it with a pulverizer, though. Nah, man. This is still big rivalry. You know he's going to say that for the very, very last hit. Bro, he did. He did a uh, dark greeting against Rhythm yesterday when Rhythm went to the Kazuya. He didn't hit it, but Joe will do it. He does not care who you are. Exactly. He's going to do it in the last hit. He, he just wait on it. Just wait on it. Mm, while running too, will not get the wall splat, but Joe was ready to, to block their ankles and getting that wall standing launch punish, sending Rhythm all the way to the wall. Let's go through the wall. He's saving it. Just waiting. Just the regular wall standing three. Doesn't go into the gamma. High open blast. Back one plus two. Into the stuff over here. And Rhythm uses the heat smash to get out and goes for the stealth one plus two. Plus two on block right there. That is nasty work. And as well, he had heat as well, if I remember correctly. So that would have been a heat dash to add insurance policy. But well, that's down forward two. Are you kidding me? Rhythm able to crush the jab. Sending Joe Crush back against the wall, but unfortunately will not get the connection to the last part. Joe Crush will start a new connection with the back one plus two engager. As both of them are going to throw the throws and able to break out every single one of them. Joe Crush able to find the rhythm here out of the throw and able Woo. to duck and punish the one plus two. And able to break the wall and extend the damage with the combo. Speaking of connection, he is flying through these walls, he's flying through Rhythm's health bar right now, and Joe Crush feeling like he's got the ability to do the same. Oh man, you almost got wall standing toot on, but the Mog Master knows exactly when to armor through. And that was actually so smart by Rhythm as well, trying to catch the timing and thinking things are gonna go for a down back one low. That's when he tried to go for the overhead, but Joe, two steps ahead, plays the timing perfectly and chips Rhythm while he's stepping all the way to the left. Steel pedal right there. Another throw. This is the second throw we've seen so far from Joe Crush. Look at this wall combo damage. He's not even done with it. Oof. But he's got the combo afterwards. He sprung kicked out of there. So the scaling is a little bit off, but the damage is enough to make the impact. Rhythm still has all the resources, but he's unable to use them. Joe Crush closes the game with a 3-1 round count. Man, good God, this is the kind of stuff that I come to tech and never sleeps for. Number 31, that's a prime number. We got nothing but USDA prime teching for you this evening. Every single time you could expect it. My God. Whew. What a match. Ready, what a match already. Battle. Rhythm was definitely playing on the same pace and none of them backed down. It is still 1-0, one, one, uh, one so anything could possibly happen. But Joe Crush is sitting pretty confident right now, trying to book his spot, book his spot at Winner's Final. This is Rhythm stage, though, honestly. I've seen so many sets with Rhythm taking it on Elegant Palace. It's definitely something that gets him some dub. Ooh, the armor-breaking throw right there from Rhythm. He tries to go for the Broken Mirage, the Steel Pedal. Nothing doing, but finally shows the slide. Ooh, that timing wouldn't have been any better for Joe. Rhythm tried to play it safe, tried to activate the armor, but Joe was way faster to activate that down forward too. The programmed uppercut is definitely programming after it, but Joe Crush finding a virus, so he's able to get the debug. But Rhythm being the antivirus software, cleaning everything up. Yeah, that debug was definitely not a debug. It was definitely an electric mech godfist, and Rhythm was able to use the Vega, the up forward one, to get the punish. 
Rhythm, though, trying to press on the Gamma Stance. That Gamma 4, though, definitely something that you need to be aware of. Boy. Mm. Out of there. Nice punish from the 1 to 1 with the 4 2. But Rhythm tries to go for that sneak stance into the guard break, unable to. Joe Crush told him he's a little bit louder. Try it again next time. You have to Rhythm trying to wake up backwards with the dump truck down 4 2 4 3. It is launch punishable, but only if you block it. Joe Crush trying again for the 4 4 3, and again not getting punished for it. What is this deal? Oh, the trade! That's what the deal is, Tony! All the way to the wall, send him to the armory. And goes for the low heat smash after the sneak stance. The down four isn't gonna realign, and that might be the dagger here for Rhythm. If he's unable to close it out, he's yeah, unable to! Oh, God, that is so unfortunate! Joe takes every single opportunity for his advantage and activates the Rage Art and blasts on through. He is on set point. Shades of Cuddle Cup where he was spamming the special style up against Anakin in, in Luthor's finals. I remember that one. You can imagine that we might see that on Rhythm's side. Rhythm is slapping him though, and Joe Crush is like, you better not whiff that. Oh my God, he whiffed it. Terrible, terrible news. And slaps him right back, telling him what the reality check is and breaks through the glass. Unfortunately, he's able, unable to get the balcony break, but able to realign himself after this Gamma Barrier Heat Dash. Can't run seven of those 4-4-2s anymore, so maybe Joe Crush isn't quite as practiced in doing them in a row. That could have been the game completely. He trying to do some style. He wasn't getting to a wall with that. He could have got something better. Oh, the hop kick. Rhythm trying to get game two on his side. Super, super close! He's able to duck and punish the swing! Rhythm, he might have found the melody to be able to make the comeback. Oh, it's Slides on. Crush's swan song. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Speaking of which, that is the melancholy melody for Joe Crush. I think that we got ourselves a game three coming here. I told you, Elegant Palace is Rhythm stage. Damn, that was very elegant. <laughs> if I say so myself, what the the composure by Rhythm is just something else. The way he just adds so much pressure with Shaheen is like no other that I've ever seen before. Agree with that 100%. Even in, at the high level, you, you know, you see players like AK and whatnot. Those are maybe the only other person that we could say is in that same level, that same echelon. But we've got lots and lots of wall breaks happening here, similar to the last stage. It's all going to really depend on who gets the first one to see who gets the momentum in this game. All right, all right. Final game here for our top eight semis. Who will meet King Ray Jr. at winner's final? A lot of jabs, down forward one. Continuing with the jab pressure, and Joker says, I know you want to keep pressing on me and mogging on him. Do the four four twos anymore? He says I know better. I learned from the last time. I think he still got tornado. Yeah, he does. He just told you know, ask for a wish, and he gets it. And Joe to ask for the body slam and the drill, but it's not gonna uh, get granted for the kill. Body slam and the titty twister is crazy. Joe Crush gets round one right there. Rhythm is gonna have to adapt. So far, he's looking stunned, looking a little bit patient here, but Rhythm able to ch uh, chip away a good amount of great health. He's playing the patient game, but Joe finding the whiff property, smelling it, and able to get the down forward too, but drops the combo. Rhythm gets the wall standing one counter hit, but unfortunately unable to get the heat engager. You know he's going to down jab here, 100%. He knows the option select. You're not going to catch me doing that, but he down jabs again. Maybe put that little mind worm into him and rhythm gets the low parry and i think he's got good wall dude you saw how sick that was he's able to sidewalk out of there and yeah. even duck just in case if he needs to but joe yo raising the roof and moving from side to side joe crush is bringing the house down with this combo as we got 10 seconds left and he's who's on the nail with the back one plus the heat dash but unfortunately unable to close out rhythm still has a chance to make the comeback 
Max. Yo, he just ran up on him and was like, do it. Do it. I know you want to do it. Dude, that combo was sick. Twitch. Twitch. Twitch chat. Y'all know what to do. You already know. I'm, I'm on it. Yo, speaking of on it, Rhythm is on it already with this launcher. And going over to this wall, he's finally going to break through this one. Yep, force one in. Guard break into the guaranteed 10 frame. No, he's actually oh. going to go for the heat dash. Interesting. That makes, even, that makes even more sense, honestly. Top forward one into the down three. Rhythm staying alive in this uh, winner set. This, this soundtrack is... This soundtrack is perfect right now. I'm not gonna I lie. agree. <laughs> yeah, it, it's been popping. Ooh, speaking of which, popping Rhythm up after that with a guaranteed throw after the headbutt. No, sir. Trying to do some wake up lows on me. Wake up, Joe. Sleepy Joe ain't here. He was never here. Joe is looking so violent right now at spinning the heat that. Mm. Talking about the heat smash, Rhythm able to get an engager with the down back 1 plus 2. He's gonna go for sneak stance into the guaranteed. He has the, the lead. He has it's the lead. Happen. Did oh he press? God, he did he press? He did! He went for the hawk edge, but you know who else is a bird of prey? Joe Crush. He's sniping here from all the way over there. That's gonna be a kill. Look at the small amount of health that Joe Crush has. That, is, that gives the power up for the rage art. Man, what? Hey. Having us with you. King Ray Jr. versus Peeling Winner Semis. This one's gonna be classic for us. And of course, he's going with the Yoshimitsu. I definitely agree with this in the matchup. Look at his name. Look at Junior's name. There's no lies there. There are no lies. Oh, he it could go with the something. Whoa! The back two whipping under the heat smash. She has like Akuma demon flip properties. She runs up so high in the middle of that heat smash, which by the way, low crushes in five frames. She needs it apparently. King Ray Jr. not getting this round so easily. That's the P-League no. special right no, there, bro. No, 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 no. He still gets a tornado flip as well. Backdash into the cross swords and to double the mix up. He tried to get the soul stealer, but Peeling's gonna steal something else, also known as the first round. What a comeback there by Peeling. Actually, one plus four is soul stealer. UCF2 is soul siphon. Actually. Oh man, King Ray Jr. already back on it. Nine seconds in, and Peeling has spent 50% of their life. Honestly, never mind. 14 seconds in, they lost all of it. And we move on into the next round. Down forward, one forward to start off by peeling. And trying to back away here. Tries to get that keep out down forward too, but Junior is sharpening up the sword with that slash kick. Four forward one. Yeah, peeling using the heat first and then immediately into the flashing steel. That's going to be so many options in that situation. Okay, nice using the slap you silly to get over there. He wasn't sure about the wall combo. King Ray Jr. does the side roll and unfortunately cannot get a kill from the sword sweep whipping. Tragic. Oh, what back two to what a reach uh while setting three yes. four there? Yes. Right. That would have been killed. Yeah. That could have been killed too, no! 20 seconds. Walking towards him. Oh, yeah. he didn't break that throw. Please be really careful trying to wake up in that situation. Waking up backwards is never the option there. I do not know why you did that. Did you just hold backwards on that? That, that was... Yeah. yeah, it makes you wake up backwards in that situation. Huh. We saw it earlier with Stupid uh, Hoodie, I think, or, or Debaser. I can't remember. Running one plus two, though, to put on the plus frame pressure and try to bait something out for peeling. Trying to get that hop here. Trying to get that jump, uh, jab crush. 40 seconds left. Peeling has 50% health left. Junior looking pretty comfortably. That move right there that Peeling used, the Meditation 1 plus 2, is the only move that allows him to recover real health, not just recoverable health. And it recovers both as well. Okay, couple more of those. No, Peeling. We know this special too often. Ooh, I know he was trying to do the bad breath. Actually, what happened right there, that was a high. If Peeling had stayed in the bad breath stance, he would have crushed that high because bad breath is a true high crush stance, but he went for the bad breath immediately and therefore got hit by it. He tried to go for the Peeling special again after the poison breath and a down forward too, and that kills him, believe it or not, because Junior was ready. This sets up a final round situation and Junior gets the first blood. It's not working out for him. King Ray Jr. knows the sequences. Bad breath and the down four, too. You're gonna have to mix it up, Peeling. Cross swords. 
Gets the bath breath. Gets the down forward to pick up. But unfortunately, Tornado Flip ain't gonna work. But is looking thunderous after this heat smash. And he's looking on fire. And he spins away to get the win. Peeling with a quick return to make it a lead on top eight winner semis. Dang. Does my sword thirst for your blood? Or... Peeling right there. Honestly... If I wasn't looking at the round count, I was like, oh man, King Ray Jr. sewed it up right there because he was dealing with a lot of peeling strategies very well, but peeling just kept it clutch and kept it together and more importantly, got his combos, got King Ray Jr. to the wall and kept the pressure on to get the kills. Now, what is the adjustment here, Tony? If you're a junior playing with a very aggressive Asuka, to go up against an absolute battle. artist of a Yoshimitsu player, also known as Peeling, what is your approach? It's tough because you know how much Peeling likes to spin, and you know how much King Ray Jr. likes to do that homing move, but that homing move is pretty stubby, as a matter of fact. Though it does come out of a dash, I don't think that it's going to be super effective in that situation. However, I think that King Ray Jr. could continue to use it a little bit more. No block on the autumn leaves, the down forward one for punish, but does get the Sabaki afterwards to make up for it. Tries to convert Nano Augusto, but peeling, ready to activate the add to get that uh, defensive property in to absorb it. Oh, mm, okay. Ray Jr. has his back to the wall. Peeling about to run in with the heat. And he runs out of it and wastes the heat smash, but he's not wasting the potential to make this comeback as after he's able to block that down one plus two and punish it with the hot knee. He's gonna get the right wall flat property, but unfortunately unable to get the wall ender. Another 12 frame punish. King Ray Jr. once again baiting the hot knee. And luckily for Peeling, he had another chance of survival, but he guessed wrong and got hit by the down back three, the enchanted circle. That was magic. Oh, yeah. Those Maji spin kicks, people talk about how good they are. They're also pretty linear, believe it or not. We saw that actually Peeling was able to sidestep right out of that. That is actually their weak side. Yeah, I thought they were cracking. Both ways, but don't matter. Back to two, able to get the uh the connection, getting the heat dash, getting the tornado flip afterward, and no. getting so much damage, getting another guard break with the back two two follow up. And Junior's like, all right, just go ahead and you know blow your spit. I don't care. I will literally sit back here, wait for you to go and put the sword away. Actually, the sword being put away doesn't really have a lot of whip recovery anymore, but he did sidestep afterwards to get killed. Patience is a virtue, and Junior took advantage of it. Hyper Spy. Mm, he tried to go for that homing move, and Peeling caught him with the down forward too. What? Late very, very last frame he got yeah, hit by that. Yeah, it was so late. <laughs> Both of them activating the heat. Junior with the counter heat. Down with a suit and the Tooth Fairy and kick him to the curb. And Peely swinging, but Junior swings harder with the 4 3. Able to get the wall split, gets another wall split, but Peeling looking in trouble, spins away and able to evade the Heat Smash and activate Heat Smash for themselves. Huge amount of life back for Peeling as well. I know you're not pressing in there, and you did. Now, back in Tekken 7. Peeling would have killed with that because the back 1 1 1 1 1 would have caused a lot of hit stun and made the rage art not be able to come out in time. However, that has changed in Tekken 8 and therefore nothing doing. Junior closing out the second game just the way Junior does with the rage art. It's poetic if I say so myself, but he's got to do it one more time to get the rivalry match against Joe Crush in winner's final. Can he do it? Oh, we got oh. to. We, you know we got to see it. We do, but we also got to see Peeling versus Joe Crush as well. Peeling does not yet have a Tampa Never Sleeps victory. This could be the first one. This could very much be the first one, and it is up to them to make it real. All right, we're on the pseudo infinite stage here the yakushima i imagine that this is going to be really good for peeling no walls to deal with but that's not good though with a round start low parry 
Ooh, he tried to go for another hot D, but Junior just kicks him off the air and get a tornado flip afterwards. Just extending the lead, feeling finally activating the heat, getting the double ones up, and Junior getting the counter hit on given to him. Okay, side roll there was actually not bad. You do take a little bit more damage there, but you're definitely not getting guard broken. And actually, it makes the OK a little bit different. Ooh, okay. Peeling got those better combos now. I like it. Shall we see the guard break set up again? No, you're not supposed to dash forward, Peeling. Come on, man. Back to two, able to find the distance. And ooh, thankfully, tip range, able to close it out. I had a feeling that wasn't going to reach, but hey, thank God. Mm, dang. The Soul Stealer Slam not getting whiff punished by King Ray Jr. Ooh, you gotta be really careful doing that mid kick afterwards because those Asuka players will definitely run that kick Sabaki on you. Bad breath. Down back three. No down, down four two afterwards. Got him finally with the sidestep to the right. That move is extremely linear. Peeling has gotten a lot of mileage on that in the past with just getting those timing catches on that 24 frame long mid. But King Ray Jr. finally getting the whiff punish launcher. And Peeling actually able to sit a uh, single backstash uh, after the, uh, the delayed down back one two. Oh, you're not dead. Five seconds left. There's literally nothing that you can do other than suicide. Oh, and he got it, but unfortunately, he didn't have the health. Tragic. That's so unfortunate. It's so unfortunate. He he, he had the right idea. Didn't have the health. He needed to do his math a little bit better. King Ray Jr. already doing his math really well. 13 seconds in, and he's almost got Peeling killed. Oh, man, that kip up is so hard to be able to whiff punish. King Ray Jr. kept on top of it, though. Kept the gas pedal on, and King Ray trying to get into winner's finals. Try to get for Tabaki, but Peeling goes for the low, spins out of there. Double down back three and closes out the range and activate the heat burst. But this is going to be catastrophic because Junior goes for the can-cans. And you know what that means if it's counter hit. A low natural counter hit given to Junior. It is going to take so much more advantage into the frames and the mental stacks. Because Junior closes out that game with no breaks. All confident. Already. I don't know who is better on this stage. Maybe Claudio because he has the low heat smash that will go straight through that wall on the first spot. We're about to find out if Divine is able to execute that first. Or maybe Wizzy can take that chance away from him. Down two into an immediate low parry. Divine Exorcist getting opened up ah, immediately. 40 seconds left to play. 1-2 into the ignition switch, and Divine Exorcist retaliates with the heat burst. Dang, that 4's range is just immaculate. It's insane how far that button goes. It's like the only low that you need. Wizzy tried to get the back turn stuff, but couldn't. Still kept the rest of the stream going. Divine Exorcist saw it coming. Back up against the wall. This is where he doesn't want to be. Wizzy still has heat on deck. 20 seconds left to play. Back 4-2-1. All of it connected. But Divine doesn't want to get the uh, the killing blow with the down 2. And is going to activate the Rage Art after the low parry. Stops the time. Stops the bleeding temporarily. And takes away the great help away from Wizzy. Could he have gotten to the wall there, Spirit? I don't know. I don't think no, he has. No, it doesn't look like it. Yeah. Yeah, it looked like his Rage Art like, pushed him super far back. Wizzy, five seconds left, chooses not to use Heat Burst at any time for that. Hey, Ashbo, thank you so much for the $2 contribution into our bracket. Appreciate you, Ashbo. Making another 105 prize pool. Hey. Yeah, that's right, keep it going. The whole 5 out of 10 string. Wizzy. Still keeping Divine Exorcist in the corner. Divine Exorcist maybe should have done a throw that would have side switched, but says, you know what? I want you to have me at the back to the wall because then you're going to try for those lows again, and I'm going to get that down too. See, if he had done that combo, he would have been able to get the wall in the last round, I think. I believe so as well. At least get the positioning, not the wall splat. But speaking of positioning here, Wizzy putting Wizzy back, uh, putting Divine Exorcist back up against the wall. But. Divine Exorcist is no stranger on challenging things, especially on down jump and getting the opening with this Italian uppercut. 
Nice, just getting up immediately, running down, and the small sidestep right into Ignition Switch turns the momentum, turns the tables on Divine Exorcist. Back four three, double down, and immediately go for the down four. Chipping away Wizzy, just poke him and make him die to a thousand cuts. Look, look at all the great health that got taken away. What great health? There's none of it. And exactly. nothing, no combos. They're just getting completely mogged on. One, two, one, the rolling Sabat. Putting Divine Exorcist against the wall. Divine Exorcist tech rolls to be able to get out. And maybe can get Wizzy to go through the wall here. Maybe. Can you get another one? No, not quite. No, but I think he could get another one in round count. Scorpion staying back for three. No duck in the second part, but the one, two, one, able to win the challenge of the back one. And the G Clef Cannon able to play its song. And that secures two rounds for Wizzy. Wizzy, well known for the machine gun jab stream right there. The rolling Sabat working out for him as it has done many other brackets as well. Look at him using the running two and the down forward one. It is immaculate, but Divine Exorcist is using the back one to stop the pressure. Sidestep out of the Italian Pistons. He, he's really trying to find out more. He's trying to get that huge opening for, uh, for Wizzy, but Wizzy's the one on Rage. Back four three, no duck again. Once again, not uh, getting a duck. Wizzy has 23 seconds left and has not used he. He's going for the block punishable strength. Will he go for the heat burst here? No. no. But he delays the back 3-3, three, three, and we got ourselves a final round situation. Who's going to get the first one in the count? The line exorcist wasn't able to sidestep right the down forward one even though he was already off axis earlier divine exorcist already using that heat look at the chip down that he's doing those poking damages are adding up yeah taking a page out of wizzy's book but this is something that wizzy doesn't have which is a hop kick and divine exorcist pulls it out of the pocket and punches on through to get the first win in this top eight losers guy slash nova putting in wizzy through the sky through the moon roof through the sun roof right there i've gotta say wizzy died three times with heat in that set yeah he really did huh i every did. single one every single one of the uh the chances that he could close it out he was unable to with heat he played it normally he didn't really abuse heat smash a lot nor nor any of the heat bursts whether it comes to grabs or not oh that's a speaking of which he didn't really grab as much either Oh, oh, you're right. Yeah, we didn't see almost Round any grabs one. from him. Fight. Maybe this is the change that he needs. We're going into Yakushima, the pseudo, the pseudo infinite stage, as you said earlier. Wizzy is feeling really comfortable about getting close. But, you know, if I just got hop kicked by Divine Exorcist in that last round, I wouldn't feel so comfortable getting that. And especially if I was going to get heat dashed like this on as well. God. On burst, but Wizzy able to step out of the way. We're gonna see quite the store, uh, scoreboard here, but the action is not gonna stop. 25 seconds left to play, and Wizzy able to cut him down and gets the lead. Woo. The heat smash gets traded, and Wizzy gets the better deal. Oh my goodness, we were looking at the stats right there, and Wizzy showing his intimidating dashes, knowing that you want to be aggressive. I'm sure that's on the statistics right there. And just the duck into wall standing too immediately. This is a different match entirely now. To step, but he doesn't get the opening with the back 4-3. But the pressure is still there, and the vine is dishing out the same flavor with the heat dash of themselves. Try to duck that time. Definitely wasn't the high. Does get the wall standing one plus two punish on the side step four. No, I think not. You're not gonna catch me pressing in that situation. <clears throat> mm, Scorpion Sting injecting the venom because Wizzy is one round away to even up the score. Another one of those five hit strings. He likes those. All permanent health. No great. The shimmy and sending him to the sky with the down forward two. The skimitar cutting through the hell part of Divine Exorcist. And I think this is it. 
I agree with that. Got the ignition switch finisher and finished it with a perfect and a no round brown with no less. What do you think did it there? He just, I, was it the spacing? I think he just woke up. I think he really just woke up. Wizzy was not playing like himself on the previous game. I was like, all right, let me go back to what's really working. And that is actually, you know, that's exactly what he did. Get ready for the next battle. One to one. Like, I don't know what just happened. He just felt a little bit more comfortable. He was shimmying right in front of him into a scimitar. Are you kidding me? He has no fear and he's going to keep doing it again. Yeah, you give Claudio space and he's allowed to do a lot of things on you that you really don't want to. And also, you kind of want to bait those hop kicks. You want them to be using those options that are going to be kind of scary for them, that have risk. Wizzy just staying right in the pocket, staying right in front of him, not afraid at all. Continuous down forward one barrages here, and this is where he changes up the tune into the 1-2-1 one, one, g claps and kicks him to the curb with a wall running four. Divine Exorcist in bad positioning right now, but he's able to fight out of it. No turning, oh, never mind, there's a turning to flip, but no, no heat, but has rage. This gotta kill. 100%, definitely. Gonna go ahead and wake the demon inside of Wizzy, and Machine Gun Wizzy gonna have to reload another clip. That's one way to reload it. We're going into the wall here. Precarious position, but I don't think it's gonna explode. Not yet. He's able to fight out of it before, but he can do it again. Okay. Divine Exorcist using the dispel magic. Can Wizzy get him up against this wall? Not if he gets heat dashed on. I don't think that he's got his back to one of these walls, but it is possible to realign. Yes, yes. It, 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 it. Wow, did exactly just that with the very last string as well. Wizzy with the side step block beating the Vanishing Storm. Not going for the third hit. Wizzy going into buttons a little bit too often after the back four two or the sneak stance transition. Either way, Divine Exorcist getting that hop kick. That's the second time that we've seen it in this set. Last time was in game one and this could be the end of it. But if this is gonna be the start of the round as well with the Sky Slash Nova. Wizzy looking in trouble. Everything's going on stereo. Raise the volume even louder because Wizzy's follow up could be its demise. But the back 4 3 able to find some life and able to find some rejuvenation and health. That's going to be so massive for Wizzy right there. And he's got the burner on, expels it, uses the broiler setting, and Divine Exorcist runs the Beyblade, spinning on you into this tiny arena. This is going to be massive. He gets the Wasp Lad as well, and the Starburst adds so much flavor into it. No explosion needed, but Divine Exorcist changes up the bracket with full explosion. Lydia stocks are up as well. XO versus Victor. We're gonna have ourselves a matchup that we don't see very often. I'm really excited. If you have not seen XO's Lydia before, I'm really happy that you guys get the chance to watch it with us. Came in on your stepping, man. It's so clean. But XO's dominance right now with his Lydia goes back to the stance and drops it off. But immediately goes right back into it after the 4 4 2. And Game and Anya has had enough. He goes for the engagement for themselves. XO with one Heaven and Earth stack already. Tries to go for the lame duck, but does not have the distance for it. That's one of her difficulties. Ooh, lame duck counter hit into the flash elbow. I like it. Ooh. Game on Anya is going to do that. And Exo is going to do that as well, closing out with the red tape. Yeah. The, it's only red tape on counter hit. I, 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 I like to call it sweep the nation. I think it's a little apt in this situation. Look once again, the counter hit doing that work for him. Double it down after the down two counter hit. Able to get engager afterward, and we're going to close the distance and close the health bar with the perfect. That was a fast one. This Clean might be even up. faster. Yeah. Clean already. Two and we have two rounds, but Exo only has one Heaven and Earth stack. 
Yo, big old counter hit into that one. And again, the sweep the nation down back three, doing a lot of pressure for Game and Anya. Game and Anya is just looking so much in trouble, trying to find an answer during those stances, but un unable to close it out because XO handing out the loves and the hugs, but also handing out the perfects. It is 1 0. And I think that might have been the fastest match that we've had all night. I agree with that. Question for you. I swear what to God, happened to another Jacksonville when, Orlando? When, no, when EXO, <laughs> when EXO went into heaven and earth dance, what did they do every time? Armor, high, there's always the high. <laughs> no, they went mid. They went for the plus six mid every time. It wasn't unblockable? I swear, that looked like the unblockable. <laughs> no, they definitely... No, if there was an unblockable, you would have seen Game and Arnia get knocked down. No, it That's was... That's what I thought, did it not? <laughs> no. <laughs> you, you put, put on those zennies. You need, you need to get your glasses back. I need to wake up. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Fry baby Sophia able to get the nosebleed and the, the counter hit, but unfortunately, Shining looking a little dull. Un unable to get the connection. Uh, Game and Anya didn't have the shiny charm on him, wasn't able to get that one. Okay, XO going for some lows, triple low actually, and Game and Anya was like, no, 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 up one plus two. That's going to beat a lot of the stance transitions. Oof, what a response there. XO just stopping the offense. Now this time it's their turn once again. Goes for the mid, tries to go for the hot kick, but immediately goes for the parry. Five of those mids in a row. God, man. Was that six in a row? I looked away for just a second. Did you go mid again? I don't know, but it was enough to just deal enough chip damage to be in a precarious position. Damn. Tony, look how many stacks there are. There are three stacks. There's a lot of things that that gives you. It makes you be able to wall splat further, gives you more health on the command throw, but neither here nor there right now, you're not getting jack squat until you get up off the floor. Game and on able to press a little bit more, able to get so much pressure in, and is so close to secure that second round. Here comes the heat dash, added in a little bit more 50-50, and it was successful after the down four. That was very difficult to deal with, especially after that first combo starting off. Game and Anya not scared about the second hit of the down forward two or down forward one. Double down on the slide again. Oh. But move. Game and Anya able to walk out of there. That was a lot. I think Game and Anya had a little practice in that setup right there, but XO was ready for it. XO not in heat, doesn't have the ability to run heaven and earth. Those three stacks are completely useless, breaking the throw, not getting the map advantage, and almost getting counter hit by the down back four, but four forward two, the god button, working out for him. Hop kick round start by Game and Audio as well with the EMP bolts. Good thing you didn't duck there. Oh, the oh delay. he ducked there though. And Anya didn't get the pickup, couldn't get the flow. Exo needs to get out of here, has only a little bit of life left, and there it is, the back one. Nice. The game changer, he was able to guess right with the high, but unable to get the launch. But Game and Anya didn't stop there because they continued to put the pressure and close it out and evening up the score one to one. We got ourselves a game. We are certainly gaming on you out here and Tekken never sleeps. Loser side top eight. Oh man, that one, I think the small stage actually hurt XO there because as soon as gaming on you was able to get momentum, you just cannot stop her. Mm -mm. I don't know what's gonna happen in this third game. Both of them are just feel, uh, like, it's, it's an absolute head-to-head. -head. It's like two bulls going at it, going at each other. Uh, Elegant Palace once again. That, gosh, I don't know which is better for you. Oh, Cyclops. I'm feeling this. I like it. I like it. I didn't even know you could do that. <laughs> Max head gets the uh, guaranteed afterwards as well. 
Mm, double it down on the forward, forward two into the heaven and earth stance. And this is where you do not want to be against this Lydia pressure. Ooh, that parry gives you a heaven and earth stack. And finally, they went for the high unblockable in that very last position. And they got two banana bunches ready for you. Ooh, lame duck into flash elbow combo once again. Putting on the pressure. No bag at cutter for you. You are not allowed in my bakery, son. We're going to cook you up in different ways. Yeah, Gaming on you actually, you know, started around with the heat and now it's gone. But Gaming on you could finish it with his launcher with the down 42 putting Exo all the way to the wall. Able to break out the grab and Exo trying to fight its way out and successfully does so. But the life lead is very much still on Exo's favor and able to close it out. And that secures Exo a set point. Well, we're whipping Gaming on you. Messes with the timing a little bit to get the down two heat engager. Can game it on you. Keep it pressure. Keep it pressure. Keep it tight. How many times have we gotten that counter? Two. Game it on you. Able to get explosion. Double down on the lows for XO. Trying to go for the stance. And gets the high range wall splat thanks to the three stocks and it gracefully gives them the victory as EXO shows them the movie of Lydia's Rage Art. I just gotta ask you one question. In what world, when you do not have a wall to your back, do you duck heaven and earth right there? I don't know, bro. Also, let me let you guys know. In situations, in most situations, where Lydia puts herself into a Heaven Earth stance, you can punch parry. On the loser's and side, Divine Exorcist is going to be one. Mexico versus United States Tejas. Here we go. Into the stratosphere. Just starting it off sky high into the galaxy. Rhythm sending Divine Exorcist with a down 4-2. But Divine Exorcist able to wake up. And retaliate and putting rhythm all through the walls with that back one wall splat. Besides the port to add a little more damage. Whoa, that was sick. Jump up and get it some couple damage in. That was interesting. Rhythm able to get the parry and get the engager afterwards with the sneak one plus two. Returning the favor now with Divine Exorcist. No slouch, not stopping the breaks. No punish there on the back three three. But doesn't even matter. Rhythm falling down in the first round. Wall running to round start, engage, and doubling down. Still has got the Starburst on hand, but that takes a lot of damage. And Divine Exorcist in continuing to delete it. Second round perfect. 12 second round. Divine Exorcist is looking comfortable to trying to get this first game into Hoover's quarters. God, that is just some explosiveness that we've had for those very first two rounds. Rhythm is trying to keep the pace together. Divine Exorcist just fighting right back. They're taking turns. Immediate timing all day. Divine Exorcist is not letting Rhythm play at all. Down back 2-1. Putting on the heat, but Divine Exorcist was ready for the outcome of the guard break. So he's able to duck and launch his Rhythm. And with that being said, adds more damage with the four burst with the wall splat as well. The Vega trying to get some extra pressure, trying to move forward, but the forward one plus two hit confirmable launcher from the Starburst. Divine Exorcist uses and gets three rounds straight on Rhythm. But first, it was looking pretty good when it comes to round one. Rhythm was looking pretty confident, putting the Divine Exorcist all the way to the wall, but just one sliver of a second, one sliver of hope. The Vine Exorcist gets an opening and gets a good amount of follow-ups as well. And then it just steamrolled from there. It was it felt like a snowball effect, and the Vine Exorcist was piloting the avalanche. Get ready for a the volcanic next eruption, battle. you might even say. Yeah, Coliseum of Fate. This is gonna be a larger stage, obviously. And I think Rhythm might have the edge here to be able to continue his stand-up pressure, the poking style, and already the slides are telling us that this is definitely his category. Man, this is like the third different player I have seen not be able to punish 4-4-3 from Rhythm. 
don't know what it is. He is getting these jab strings here, though, into the immediate Hornet from the guard break. Sure, you can run through once again. Rhythm just sitting there and ducking out in the long range, not really worried about forward, forward, forward. Okay, using the boy hand, trying to really mix those timings and finally catches Divine Exorcist. Frame perfect on the startup of that. I didn't even see what button it was, but he low parried it and said, Get that mess out of here. That's a magic four that you have to commit to. I didn't expect to see that. You don't see too much of that on rhythm side. Skates on him to be on the way over to that other side. Man, barely telegraphed that running to that Superman punch. <laughs> Tragic. I guess it doesn't track to that side. Divine Exorcist is getting away with murder there. And does it again. Looks like sidestep right is pretty good against Shaheen, huh? Very much so. Very much so. Because you can see that Divine Exorcist has been sidestepping full all the way to the right or sidestep uh, sidestep into back three and just finding so many cuts. Again, the long range ducks from Rhythm are paying off. Divine Exorcist is just thinking, oh, no, nah, he's not going to duck when I do the high. I've got his timing down. Apparently not. Poof. You want to activate heat? I got one right for you. Rhythm has the better end here. Again, yeah, sidestep right back three, just as you were saying earlier. Divine Exorcist is trying to use it a lot. Rhythm getting his dodge, but not getting what he needs. Getting knocked down. Goes for the Vega again. Tries to go for slide, and Divine Exorcist seems to come in a mile away. Oh, no. No, not the wake up four, putting the arrow right through you, sending your body down to the floor. Divine Exorcist is sending Rhythm to Elimination Station. He's trying to punch that ticket. Back 3-3, three, three. Rhythm's not gonna uh, release early, but he's gonna get that engager. And Divine Exorcist has been ducking that sneak guard break every single time. But he's not been launching it though. He barely got a 1-2 on it. Can Divine Exorcist bring it back? You have to stuff Rhythm before he gets the opportunity. You gotta get the correct combo here. You do yes, have rage, that's a 20% extra. Can he get to a wall? I think so. No, the 1-1 one, one doesn't get the right wall splat property, but Rhythm immediately tries to fight back, trying to stay alive, and it successfully does so with a double sweep. We are in a set point versus survival point. Divine Exorcist had every single chance to close it out but Rhythm took it away, and now it's his turn to put on the pressure after the double guard breaks. Yeah, Divine Exorcist is gonna get a chance to get some of that gray life back, but huge amounts of black life just completely gone already. Jab. And this time he goes for the mid and so a sidestep for Divine Exorcist getting a heat dash, and we've seen that combo previously, he's gonna do it again. He's gonna get another perfect wall splat, and that's how you exercise your demons. Because Divine Exorcist styles his way out into Loser Sammy's eliminating rhythm. Okay. How many times the IC peeling spin? And I guarantee you it's gonna be more than 10. Let's see how it works. I'm gonna see how many flash. You, you count the spin, I got the flash. Oh, and, and the spits, we gotta, we gotta see how many Hakuas he gets. Back 1-1, one, one. that's plus 4 on block if you block the second hit into the down forward 2, that right-handed upper. You know that I wasn't gonna fall for that crap, that's day 1 Yoshimitsu stuff. Minus 4 into flashing steel, get that out of here. I'm gonna <laughs> knock you down and then block the stagger low. There it is, 1. one. Ooh, that's unfortunate, just a little bit off axis. Exo able to find the mark here. Able to get the tic tac toes, but healing might get that double you here after this four break. This is gonna set them up in such a good position with the tornado flip and regaining the health. Mm, he was just too close to be able to have 3 1 recover in the right situation. That would have actually broken the floor, so whether you had the health left or not, that was not your round. 
Lightning Spirit cut healing in half after XO got spirited away in the last round. And then 1-1 one, one, tragically spikes XO for the combo. He gets no more pressure. Oh man, XO isn't familiar with the peeling special of the Hawk Twa Uppercut. Let's keep it away. One more time? No, he's gonna keep it simple, but this time he's gonna add a little armor with that heat burst. XO able to get that counter hit sweep and he should be able to revitalize the health and stabilize the uh the life lead situation. Oh man, the second hit counter hitting again is a launcher in heat if it's counter hit. No block or, or whip punish from XO, but look at how much that life lead has swung already. Doesn't want to deal with the breath, goes for it and punches the stomach. XO cleans it up and evens up the round. That was a great easy to the full forward too. I gotta expect that we see a lot more of that. Hello, why did that whiff on the peeling sword put away? I'm not sure. Peeling going for the 3-4. XO is just standing their ground at the perfect spacing to not get hit by the spin. Two, three. Woo! What? It's a good googly moogly. Yep, that that actually parried the heat burst. I, I forgot that's basically to do that now. Trades out Peeling. It's got about like 10% left, but has a lot of great health to recover. 20 seconds left to play. Has has Rage, but unable to use it as XO gets the backhand and gets the lead. Yeah, that back one is absolutely great stuff. Can we keep it going on? Yes, XO's got Peeling to finally press Flash, but unfortunately couldn't get it. This is one of the things that I know so well about XO. You know how Lydia has perfect punishment for every frame? XO is so perfect at punishing frame perfect every single time. Oh, finally gets hit by the bad breath. That is unfortunate and Peeling's gonna get the guard break follow up. The XO just decides to take it and is going to run away with it. He has the life lead with 20 seconds left to play. None of them have heat, but XO is stacked up. Both of them on Rage. Spins away. And the breath. Oh, not the breath again. Oh my gosh. Take a Tic Tac feeling. Oh, trying to use that full crouch sweep low. That's not a low that we see too often from healing. He's been doing less keep out or rather less bad breath keep out Ooh, the political punch knockdown can they keep it going First spins thing. away again gets the back two two he gets a connection and look at uh exo's heat as well it's dying down but it doesn't even matter because exo able to get the the, uh, the finishing blow with the back one four this is really good counterplay, just like Jumanji said. Now, obviously, we have seen Peeling get spat on a couple of times, but it was like just two out of like 15 or 20. And I got to think that Exo is feeling pretty damn good right now for his spacing. I don't think Peeling makes the switch. It would be interesting if he does, but I don't think so either. Yeah, agree, agree. Okay, now, even in the larger stage in the Descended to the Subconscious, it didn't feel like Peeling had the edge, even though really that is... Oh my god, Ooh. I was wrong. I was wrong. Excuse the hell out of me. Peeling says, all right. If the Yoshimitsu bad breath, if the sword's not gonna work, let me bring out the great wall and my girl Ling Xiaoyu, the one where my namesake is. I am the princess of this character. Cyclone Pops able to get the, uh, the opening, but Peeling gets a misinput and drops the combo. Zapdoor 1 4 and XO getting the counter hit. Peeling caught pressing. Ooh, political punch actually gets a little bit more wall carry. I like that quite a bit. Got 442 getting ducked by the AOP. We're definitely gonna remember that. Gets the pickup, but doesn't continue. Healing able to wake up immediately and goes for the heat. And 
tries to go for the waning move. XO, able to uh, real realize that and able to break it. One stack for them, but no heat. Both of them, no heat. Another great wall left for Keeling. Trying to get out of there. Does get the float and X marks the spot. And we're going to the treasure trove. Can they finish it off? You want a really long combo here so that XO has no ability to come back. Whoa! What? That didn't connect when she did the wall jump? Could you imagine? <laughs> I could, honestly, but she was way up on that wall. She had that spider kid action going on. Are we gonna see the blooming flower? Not quite. We're waiting for it. Going low a couple of times. Do you want a duck? No, you don't. Oh my god. That was so fast. And that sets feeling for a clean 2-0. Exo's gotta make a, a three round comeback to eliminate feeling here to move on to lose the semis, but can they do it? Nice cross lifting palms right there, but not getting punished for it. XO needs to continue to move forward using that lame duck, but the Wayne's Wayne Ning Moon catching healing his opponents and now getting them to the wall. Activating the heat burst forces it to 50 50 with the hypnotism, but XO was ready and able to punish it with an engager of themselves. Wow, just stat ducking and got up at the very last moment and got hit by the throw. One plus two, not working out for them. Just getting the side What? And back one is whipping tragic. The wall jump again and follow up mistrust. Exo, I can't see you making the comeback out of this one, my friend. Time running out and Peeling's gonna run away with it. If you rage arted there, you might have gotten killed. Like if you just hit four for three and then immediately get rage art, he could have done it, but I don't even know if they had this. Hold on, let me let me see. I'm just gonna look back right here real quick and try to see if he could have done 443 into Rage Art if he had any space for it. Yes, barely. I, it would have come down to a photo finish if they had. It was nuts. Yeah, because that's gonna do a lot of damage because of the scaling and stops the time, and that could change up everything because Exo could have gained about 13 health out of that too. Yep. But we're forcing it into a game three here, Tony. The Ling is working. I can't expect any less from Tekken Never Sleeps number 31, that prime action. P and P Ling must stand for perfect. That's what happened in that last game. But XO immediately putting on the pressure and getting heat bursted out of the 4-4-3, which apparently leaves you aerial. Magic. You hate to see it. So it's a low pair to second part, but Peeling able to get the heat smash during the air. XO using the strings to make sure that Peeling's evasiveness is uh, neutralized. And then there it is, the Peeling perfect pop kick. Could use the 4-4-4 four, four, four and choose not to go for the wall here. Not that wall, anyway. The shooting star able to provide the wish because Peeling is officially in the lead in this set. Look at the back turn throw, very interesting. X marks the spot once again. No launch punish on the whiff. Top kick is unfortunate, and Peeling is already going into the heat engager. 50% gone as well. Exo looking at one stack, one heat meter, but the whiff punishes right now is so much in Peeling's flavor. Wow, I knew that was gonna happen. I AOP knew it. Down is beating the heat burst down back to to send it into the final round possibility for Peeling. He tries to go for the mix and the wall standing to counter hit, but XO able to escape it but can you escape fully as peeling able to get the counter hit double palm sending exo all the way to the wall and then you get spike into a corner guaranteed damage i'm not sure if that option was guaranteed i've never seen it be guaranteed but peeling is gonna send it all the way gets three rounds straight and that pressure was insane maybe that's what the p and peeling stands for maybe it stands for pressure here, oh. winners finals. We're getting down to the nitty gritty of it. Let's get it. Joe Crush versus King Ray Jr.
And Junior goes with a Tekken 5 DR Classic. And he's gonna do it with the Classic because that down forward 2 is Relic in its time. Sending Joe Flush all the way to the wall, immediately taking away so much health. And Joe Flush immediately just sidestepping out of there. He does get the wall splat even off axis, but unfortunately the down forward 2 1 doesn't get him combo. And King Ray Jr. immediately saying, mm, I think you want to do some more punches, don't you? I think you're a little punch drunk though. Let's get this heat first and get over to this other wall so I can get a couple more wall hits. What a block on the down wall plus two. He knew that was coming. He's able to get the perfect punish with the wall standing one. A stylish combo as well from one wall to another. And drills him through. Joe Crush looking pretty with the life lead. That first round was amazing, honestly. Just the first, the, the rubber banding of the momentum that we saw between Joe Crush and King Ray Jr. And we're already down to the bottom of the stage with the picket fence. Oof. Exerciser able to put Junior on heat, but he's gonna extinguish it immediately with a sidestep to heat dash. Standing all the way to the fence, and you know what's gonna get broken. And he used the down back 3 3 to actually realign him even more perfectly with Joe Crush in that wall. Ooh, the Sabaki unable to have the armor break throw deal with, and Joe Crush gets huge amounts of damage finally on that throw. Yeah, he's been really like baiting every single Sobaki out. He's doing a perfect job at it, whether it is being, he's playing patient or grabbing immediately after. Did that down forward one get blocked like 150 degrees off axis? I do not know. That was almost a wall splat for King Ray Jr. Joe Crush, seed planting again and again. And oh no, you want to make the second hit connect. That's unfortunate. Yeah, unfor very much unfortunate. 4-3, hold it down. Goes for the heat, heat smash, and with the grab, but Joe Crush able to break out. So Junior opts out to go for the Rage Art Ooh. and jumps out of there into the heat smash. Joe Crush jumps out of disaster and brings down the colony. <laughs> okay, now, people are out in chat. That works? Okay, so already the spacing was pretty good for Joe. He probably could have done like a double back dash and been just fine. But also, even if King Ray Jr. had let it rip earlier and caught Joe Ariel, it would have been less damage. So jump back is like honestly just Giga Chad levels of genius tech. It's not an OS, but it's way better than the other options. For sure. Yeah, yeah, you definitely don't want to try and sidewalk with with Joe Crush with Jack. Can can but. Junior doesn't get a full combo. He gets able to drop it. So he's gonna try to restart it after the heat dash into the wind energy. Almost got the three ring circus third hit, but couldn't get there. But Joe Crush does get hit by the unblockable wake up tech. Fight. Ooh, sidesteps the dragon wheel and Joe Crush able to have a connection with the back one plus two. Or three catching King Ray Jr. stepping to the right, but he's gonna still do it, especially when he has that sidestep two button. Down jab beats a lot of the Gamma Howl transitions. That's absolutely known by King Ray Jr. and Joe Crush is stopping any pressure. Got time, jabs. Jabs again. Boy! Boy! Does it get the kill up the four two? Doing the down jabs. Joe Crush not falling for it. What in the good googly moogly? Why did you get hit by that one? Now there is a 50-50 on the end of it. There is a mid or a low. That could have been the situation. I thought that was fuzzyable though. Mm. Joe whips out the one, but able to get the uh, the low parry and able to restart the damage and sending Junior to all the way to the wall. He gets the wall splat. He gets the tornado flip and he gets the realignment for the combo. There we go. Finally, I see somebody being able to block punish that minus 13 button. It does come out very quick, but it is certainly punishable. And what better way to close it out with the heat smash? Joe still alive, but gets caught grabbing. Nice duck. Okay. Did something extra. Goes for the knee. Joe Crush not going for the gamma particle barriers anymore. And I think King Ray Jr. has got this one sewn up to get us a tie game. Kick him, staying alive, 
But the down four denying the comeback. Yeah, we are indeed in even ground. One, two, one, and Junior responds back. I'm so glad. This is such a good night, man. I'm, you know, it's always a good night when you got Tampa never sleeps. It's even better night when I'm on here with my homie, just the spirit, my brother. And it's even better when we get to see the Titans, the TNS champions, Joe Can't Crush and King Ray Jr. Battle. duking it out in these long sets. I think we're gonna go in the distance here. I'm just gonna call it final, final Agreed. round. Agree. Agree. They almost always do. Yep. Fight. If not, at least a final game. Don't oh, counter it. Yeah, I guess it wasn't. It did low crush though, because remember, can can low crush within five frames. Joe Crush gets a wall standing two one and is now putting on that pressure. King Ray Jr. is blocking or rather breaking the throws. Nobody running the heat yet, but King Ray Jr. sure is trying. And the Shago Hod, oh, just sending them out. Joe Crush still still feeling a little cuddly after the win at Cuddle Cup, able to hug Junior to get the win after the one plus two. But Junior didn't really like that. He goes with the Dragon Wheel and starting it off pretty strong. Mm, good punish, absolutely. Now that doesn't knock down anymore, but it allows King Ray Junior to be able to set up a really good running mix. Unfortunately, King Ray is not a Nani Augusto, so couldn't get the maximum amount off of it. What a frame perfect ground break! What the hell? Forward four, but the trade, none of them were able to get the launch afterwards. So we're back on even ground. Both of them still have heat. And Joe trying to go for the plasma barrier into the engager, but Junior is very much ready for it. He's gonna back away here because he's sitting comfortably Ooh. into the OS low jab, but Joe was able to recover recover fast enough to get the low parry. Okay, Junior was late on it. That's a damn shame. Oh, the Rage Art is gonna hit because the first hit of the Heat Smash is not gonna do enough. In fact, I don't think it hit at all. It didn't have the spacing for it. King Rage Art Jr. Doesn't want to deal with the Heat Smash, but everybody's got to deal with that <laughs> Rage Art. Right back at you. Low parry for themselves. Jr. Playing amazing as well. Goes to the low, uh, the high low. Joe unable to uh, get the low parry and unable to find a connection because he gets launched. They shimmy just a little bit too much during that combo and stop them from getting the rest of it. But the first couple of hits are the most important part, so we take those. That's some range three still works. Be nice. Yeah, right. <laughs> Lee players could never. <laughs> Oh man, and King Ray Jr. may never get up off the floor after the tombstone into the Joe Crush full crouch string. He's got 12 seconds in, 4-2 to finish it, running three, and yeah, the one backdash. That's one of the greatest things about Jack, is his backdash dish is so good. And Joe Crush gets that single backdash into 2-1 to close out the round. But the Sabaki could get started in the next one to make sure that final round is coming for King Ray Jr. Yeah, he overextends once again, unable to get the perfect punch parry because of its counter hit. But Junior is not letting go at all because he activates another Exerciser. Down forward two for your troubles, and Junior should be able to close this out with this huge damaging combo. Fight it. In. Mm. Uh huh. Goal! Asso, asso. King Ray Junior, Joe Crush, final round to see who can extend the lead here. No whip punish after the slash kick. Double down the pulverizer and stopping the armor properties. Side step two. Junior's first one to be activated on the heat. Beautiful up four three. That was right before Joe Crush's armor was able to start up. Remember, armor takes seven frames to be able to start up. Great back dash. King Ray Jr. was unfortunately not in range to be able to get the whip punish though. Junior's the one person rage and also the heat's gone, but so is your health bar. Joe Crush activating the tombstone and extending the lead, making it two to one in this winner's final. We got one more game to go for Joe Crush to move on to Grants. Now I just have to say one weakness that I see from King Ray Jr. Explosive. The throws. 
He's eaten four or five throws already in this set. Not just that as well. I Get do want to add into the throws. Joe Crush has been calling out every single Slovakia and every single armor. So yeah. therefore, he... Junior is having a tougher time trying to uh, break into that window because it is a 14 frame break when it comes to the counter hit throws. They are difficult. King Ray Jr. gets counter hit already. Descending into the subconscious. This can be a very quick map, especially when you're dealing with Joe Crush. He has those setups to be able to get you down there in one interaction. King Ray Jr., though, not ready to get down there just yet. He could have got it launched, or he could have got a wall flat rather. How many seconds did Joe just stare at Junior? I was like, I'm gonna do this move, and it was a seam planner. It's definitely happened a lot. That is certainly the tail of the tape. Ooh, boom. Try to go for the hop kick, but unfortunately, Joe first got the dirty bubble. But King Ray Jr. popping that bubble with the can can. Hmm. Joe, Joe actually tried to delay the timing into the offense, but so did Junior. <laughs> Exercise. Another Not square. yet. We're going to see it again. Oh my god, I ducked. I ducked and I died. He dropped the combo though. He dropped the combo. He could be dying here. Junior activated the heat smash. Tried to walk to the right, but the back 1-1 one, one was able to clip. And that sets June, uh, Joe Crush into set points. Yeah, that 4 one, one definitely catches to that side. Oh no, this used to break floor back in Tekken 7. So King Ray Jr. Oh no, not three seed planters. Please do it. I, I, I need it. I'm sorry. Baseball slide? No. No, it didn't connect. So therefore it was in range. So the heat smash didn't follow through it. I'm not able to get the floor burst. But Joe Crush able to duck the high and jabs out for victory and denies the final round, final game prediction was Peeling versus Divine Exorcist. Now, Divine Back Exorcist in the Yoshi. Happen. All right, fantastic run right here. But Peeling, I think, with a sidestep left. Wow. Imagine having Yoshimitsu sidestep work for you. Couldn't be Skill issue at this point. Wow. <laughs> I have statistics, sir. <laughs> Flashing steel, peeling, going for the guard. Why would you ever get up there? That is unfortunate. And peeling just needs a little bit more time on the character. He's supposed to do CD2 to get the walls flat in that situation. Come on, bro. Dude, what just happened? Peeling just escaped <laughs> everything. That was so cool. <laughs> Oh, dude, Peeling sidestep has been evading so much of Divine Exorcist's option and able to get a huge damage output afterwards. Which is very interesting because you know Claudio's buttons, they have such great hitboxes. There's the spin into the back 2-2. Two, two. That is going to do that work. We're going to see quite a bit more of that, I am sure. Peeling's going to get this tornado into the guard break setup. You're tackled again? All right, Divine Exorcist. We're gonna have to teach you a little something about this matchup, my dude. Oh, that was so cool! He went to Indian stands while uh, oh, to evade man. while running too, and he gets the win after that one. That's gonna add so much mental stack afterwards, and it shows because Peeling has a round start counter hit a down four two. Divine Exorcist looking in trouble after this wall corner pressure. It's the rainbow drop. Divine Exorcist is having trouble dealing with the spacing here. Never mind, as I say it, the down 4 3 1 walls flat. He's on fire with the slam dunk. Flashing Steel, unable to get a connection, but again, spinning out of trouble and trying to get the mix and delaying the timing on Dragonfly 3. No way. He definitely did running two there, but unfortunately, Divine Exorcist was too far away. He stood up into it. That move, we just got to say, that move is peeling kryptonite to Divine Exorcist's Superman. And God, it is just active for so long. Oh. It's an unblockable, right? It's unblockable. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Well, you hate to see it.
Yeah, you it's really difficult because you don't have a lot of high crushing moves that are able to advance with Claudio, except maybe the down back three, the down fake edge. Two. Down back one plus two. Uh, uh, yeah, but you use it. I don't even think that's a high crush. It might evade for a little bit, but by the time you're there to evade, then he's already like you get back down and the mist kills you still. Speaking of misting, uh, killing you, we're about to see a repeat again. Oh my god! No, no. Come on, Divine Exorcist. Not like this. Not the allegations. Don't let us. Don't let us know that you're not in on the Yoshi Mitsu matchup knowledge. Round two. Well, healing is not denying them. But Divine Exorcist is not denying this defeat just yet. While standing to round start, sending healing all the way to the wall and deleting 60% health. There it is, sidestep down back 1 plus 2, and this could be the round for Divine Exorcist, and he's gonna start it off with a perfect possibility. No, he Doesn't drops the combo! The up. No, no, he burst with punish, but okay, 21 second perfect, we take those. Uh, I didn't give, I didn't curse him. Thank God. Oh, you can't convert, you can't curse the Divine one. About that. Oh, he just barely made the heapers or the bad breath whip after that keeper. I like the timing right there. Healing is definitely gonna keep doing it though. Ooh, the soul stealer helicopter spin. Please don't wake up again. Okay, there you go. At least you stayed on the ground. Oh man, that was so crucial, but so is this. Tries to go for the size and into the mid, but healing is ready to block it. Nice while standing forward to able to find the coverage on Dragonfly. This sets survival point for the Bind Exorcist. We're peeling, making some gaps in their offense with the bad breath, but the down forward to the tried and true, and then uses the woodcutter to go downstairs. Doesn't get the wall flat, but the the, uh, the positioning is in healing's favor, trying to make it divine's favor now. As both of them are in heat, but divine exorcist spends the heat dash immediately. And the starburst as well. So now there's no starburst that gives divine exorcist that edge. Get those punishes though. You definitely don't want to do minus 12 things versus Claudio. Oh man, he wasn't able to get it. It was too late. And divine exorcist misses it. No, not through the floor. Okay, it was the wrong throw. Yeah, I hate to see it. I really hate to see it. This is set point versus survival point. Once again, using his zoning, he stayed in the bad breath stance, holding his stomach for a little bit too long. And there it is. That's the grab that's going to break the floor. We're going to see the down two, two. Where are we going? We're going for the guard break setup. Please don't wake up. Oh my he woke god. Up. He woke up. And this sets up the heat engager for peeling. Bad breath. Able to trade with the Superman punch, but not this time around because healing shows them what a bad memory is with the bad breath and closes it, finalizes it, and makes it into top three to meet King Ray Jr. for the run back. First and second place on the TNS leaderboards. If he is ready to prove himself, now is the time. Yep, the gauntlet no starts other way. now. Then number one, and immediately King Ray Jr. says, thank you very much. I would love to do a homing move and stop you. He didn't let him do it too. He like he actually put a little bit of pause and then delayed the back four, the forward four. Done it again. Another one. Okay, this is gonna descend it all the way. He's got a little off back. He's gonna get the spike. Mm, never mind. doesn't want it to go for it. 24 second perfect is a very commanding way to start the first to three set. I didn't even know that he did not hit Junior at all. I swear I thought he did it with a low. But does it even matter? Junior still continuing on the momentum here and activating heat. Peeling's turn now, matching up the energy. Anyway, Junior doing great with the punishment again with the wall runs. Peeling gets their way out, sidestepping after that. Whoa, I don't understand why Peeling is alive right now, but it's cool. Oh man, the Soul Stealer slam huge damage. 
He has the lead, sitting comfortably. Junior doesn't have the aura, doesn't have heat, only has range and one interaction. Ooh. Gets one in, able to block the sweep. I don't understand why King Ray Jr. didn't do the follow-up after the Lost Ending 1-3. He could have gotten even more damage on it. No way, this does not work. Deathcopter, I don't even know why. Oh, I know exactly what happened. Healing thought he was still in no sword stance, so that's why he did the Deathcopter, but he wasn't in no sword stance anymore. Regardless, Healing does get the round finished with the Mighty Spin Kicks. Mm, but Junior starts off the third round with the counter hit Can Can. Taking away a lot of health, resetting the damage into a Ooh. almost flat of the unblockable and double down on the holding spinning three. All right, Junior. Guys, better unblockables. King Ray Jr. or Princess Link? Princess Link. But talking about in connection rate, right now it's Junior. Yeah. Ooh, healing going for the little empty hop. Ooh, that's a move that we don't see counter hit too often. Yoshi players should use that more often. Ooh, nice row kick. And goes for the low wall slump as well. Finishing her. Falling rain. Tech fire this throw or you will feel the pain. Down four out of the wall jump. Healing, I feel like out of all the players, healing is the one that uses the wall jump the most. <laughs> I agree. We've already seen it work five different times tonight. So far, he's not been punished for it. Kick him. Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna run up and full crouch somebody when Yoshi mids when uh, we have a five frame can, can jam happening. Oh my gosh, he went for the unblockable that time. He finished the combo. Oh my, it wasn't max damage. Healing though uses the down forward one. Remember, you are plus four after you block those spinning highs. Minus four after you block those spinning highs. Sorry. The plus four spinning highs would be insane. <laughs> well, he's, pl he's plus four. Like Yoshi is plus four after the spinning high. Eesh. Like one of the only plus frames that he gets. So it's just the hitbox is trash. Oh, it got broken. Gave King Ray Jr. health there. Goes for the heat smash, it goes for the overhead, but Junior is not ducking, he is not phasing out, but he is sidestepping and getting that whip punish with the Demon Slayer. No heat needed, but a big kick will do it. First blood goes to Junior. He had no reason to duck at the wall there. Peeling had already shown that he wasn't gonna do a high. Now, he did do the Spirited Away when King Ray Jr. was at the wall earlier in the rounds, but he had shown the Dragonfly mid at the wall and then was like, you know, all right, let's just try to put Peeling up against the, or try to put King Ray Jr. up against the wall and try to make him duck. But Jr. had no reason to, no reason whatsoever. What I'm really noticing about the change in Jr.'s play style is that he's playing and he's learning and he's taking advantage of it is by playing a bit more patient than we normally used to seeing him. If he's comfortable on what to do, he just sits there. He doesn't yeah. even backdash, he just stares at them. Yeah, he's not worried about the bad breath at all. And, you know, healing doesn't use meditation stance. Like, that could be better. Uh, what did I tell you about using that mid kick up by these Oscar players? Now, you have to actually stand up to be able to do it. So it's high execution, but Junior knows what they're doing. Oh, and, you know, homie moves? What are those? Uh, but the thing is, when she did that, it actually, like, magnetified and just brought him up to Peeling's Yoshi. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Up it on the ground right there, and Peeling just does the empty hop. Tragic. Once again, Peeling just doing the bad breath, and Junior's like, you know what? I will stay right here. I do not care. Yeah, just going off of what I said earlier, but Junior, he's got the shimmy of himself as well with, you know, with the little sneak dashes into the inner strength. We want to shimmy, shimmy, shimmy to the break of dawn, and we are about to get there. It's been a long night so far. Peeling does not get the wall standing one, two, just got the regular one, two. Not a great string, and then down for two, getting their own launch punish on the whip of theirs. Yeah, tell me how, how that down for two is supposed to be done, which secures Junior two rounds in into the second game. 
Tries to go for the boy in the puddle. And Junior tries to get the counter hit. Can can. So far, nothing working out in the gold mode. Whoa. Jimmy. We're loving this right now, honestly. This is a great option to be able to beat the bad breath because he can just full crouch and get under it. This is absolutely a great tool. And he has multiple options when it's down, uh, down uh, one plus two, and he has down back one. Henry Jr. is just waiting for Peeling to go for these long range zoning options, and they're not working. Damn, shame. that's supposed to be shame. natural combo. That is shame. a damn shame. Shame! Oh, no. That's so unfortunate. Junior steals that game. And that sets Peeling in a very, very tough mountain to climb. Yeah, we were definitely on the mountain side over there, and Peeling could not climb it. King Ray Jr. still giving him the ability to go for it. Divine Exorcist out there in the chat saying, let's go, Jr., let's go. There's a lot of different chants going out here in the chat, but I'm thinking maybe we might need a character switch, man. Next battle. Chat, if you guys are rooting for Peeling, he needs your energy right now. Let's see if Peeling is able to make the comeback. Or will Jr make it another classic grand final to meet Joe Crush. There's the first flash coming in with the heat engager afterwards. Mmm, Tan Tan into Sabaki. You're getting caught by the classics out here. King Ray Jr. getting you over through that wall, down through the balcony, and look, the amount of recoverable life has been lessened due to that balcony break. Nice bait and punish out of the Wasa hitting 3 plus 4 and peeling using the back 2 2 because its range is so good. Able to get the heat dash afterwards and the position is right in peeling's favor right now. Very interesting that peeling didn't go for a floor break. He's trying to save it for later, I'm guessing. It's the second hit of the helicopter kick that always gets you. That's the one that does the most damage, too. Oh, dishing the damage right back out. The 4 gets in connection as well. Activating the heat burst, extending the damage. Tries to go for a 4 4 3 wall splat. That could have been a whip punish, but Peeling got a miss input backing out of there. But ah. the bad breath able to crush the high. Peeling definitely did not. Oh my god, King Ray Jr. didn't get the ability to go and enter the full crouch there. He actually has the ability to tech roll out. Peeling is spinning, crashing out, but heat dashing out as well interesting choice to use the floor break here what do you think this is gonna set up either a blessing or a curse right now it's a blessing peeling gets the first hit with the hot knee. it goes for the soul sword and the souls explode onto them as well spirit away and switching the position Hey, running three. That is something that I need more of peeling. Now, it is extremely linear. That's certainly a thing. However, King Ray Jr. is being so stationary when peeling is trying to, like, sit back in zone. Oh, oh my god, speaking of which, zone, you finna get over here with a tombstone. Rest in peace to your life. We're going over there, we're going over here, and we're back in the middle. Peeling's heat's running out, uses the Ooh. heat smash, but Junior able to find the opening with the slash kick. 10 seconds left. Peeling has no life to gain back, and Junior has two more rounds to meet Joe Crush. Junior not dealing with any of this business right here. He's got him already sent up to the sky, a funeral palm, and trying to get Peeling to go up against this wall, even though that one's not going to explode. Oh, notice that time he didn't go for the mid kick because he didn't want to get Sabaki. 35. Oh no, you got caught! This is gonna do yeah. so much! This is gonna set up a set point versus survival point situation after this kick. That's the second Peeling. time that Peeling tried to do wall jump and got back with instead. Junior is like, you know what, deal with it. He actually neutral guarded into getting hit by Wall City 1 3 there, Spirit. Stop. That time. Goes for the armor, goes for the aura, goes for the double sweep, but Peeling was ready, but he wasn't ready for the can can as Junior's able to shred him through. 
should be able to send to the wall, and we got an explosive wall, and we're going on stereo once again. Cobbo's gonna get louder as he kicks on through it with the heat meter dying out. Ooh, flashing? I think not, sir. King Ray Jr. gets three games straight against Princess Ling. The zoning is not working out. Going to the grand finals with the Jack Aid by Joe Crush on winner's side versus King Ray Jr. on losers. This is gonna be a bloodbath. Let's go. Titans never sleeps champion. Eight time versus seven time. King Ray Jr. versus Joe. Now, Joe is on winner's side, so that means that if Jr. wants to gatekeep, he's gonna have to win six games. That's starting to sound like a good beginning there. Joe trying to get that wall jump combo. But he's gonna try to restart, reset the momentum here, getting the heat engager. But Junior, no slouch, able to duck the string with the punishes with the wasp ending 3 plus 4. Joe showing the 4 3 into the high. Instead, good googly moogly King Ray Junior just running up and sending that button. Hot damn. Oh, wow, the Twitch Duck able to stand yeah. up quickly. Doesn't want to get the, any guaranteed damage. There you go, Destabilizer mid. Ooh, wow, that was actually a really good follow-up. And Joe Crush being off to Axis gets the third hit of the 2-1-2, but unfortunately couldn't pick it up. And King Ray Jr. says, I think I will take this combo. Thanks so much for dropping it for me. Yeah, I'll pick it up for my own, for my own well-being, for my own wealth because he is two rounds richer. Ooh, that you was definitely sick. got stopped by the Mog Master. That was one of the worst whiff punishes of all time. And it wasn't even a whiff, but the armor makes it act like it did whiff. Good God. Oh my damn, that was a huge 17 second round. Guys, I know it's kind of bad for commentators to scream out oohs and ahs, but damn, that was Who's in Oz all over? Listen, authenticity is the name of the game out here. I definitely felt that way. Boom. Henry Jr.'s got quite a bit of life lead here. He is getting the what in the guts? He got whiff punished and the the wall. I had no words for it for a second there, my man. I had no idea the wall was even there. Oh, he tried to realign it to get the side wall as well to extend the damage. But Joe, the accordion punch, unfortunately gets reeled back because Junior activates the can can and cutting him down. He's gonna activate the heat. He's gonna go for the heat dash. He's gonna go for extra damage. He's gonna kick him. But no, he doesn't fully finish it. But the three ring circus will finish the ride and Junior books a ticket because he's one game up in this grand final set. That's the second time that Joe Crush specifically ducked the third hit of that string where it was a mid instead it's crazy you have to low parry the second hit in order to not deal with the third that's a thing that you see a lot in Tekken strings where if you duck the second hit and or low parry the second hit if you deal with the second hit in the way you're supposed to then you don't have to deal with the mix on the third but He's not doing it yet, and so he's having to take that 50-50, and so far King Ray Jr. has been 100% on getting it. Round one. Fight. Second game here, grand final, second never sleeps, 31. Junior has to reset the bracket to win the tournament, to extend the, the count to a 9 TNS victory. Joe Crush trying to find a victory here, Ooh. trying to even up the score 8-8, eight to eight, and this is a start that he would love to, to have right now. Counter hit, whiff punish, down 4-2, sending Junior all the way to the wall. Guaranteed. Oh, actually, that one was not guaranteed. King Ray Jr. just decided to stay down. You get a guaranteed down 4 on the end of it, but if they choose not to, then they can just make you get hit by more. Their time, we did, went for the destabilizer low. Last time was mid, this time was low. Let's not forget. Seed Planner, you know what got him the win on the winner's final set is that multiple Seed Planners. Joe Crush able to get the 10 frame heat smash, but it is in the air, so it is skilled just a tiny bit. But Joe Crush is not afraid and closes out the range with a down back one. 
we were talking about how down back one wasn't really seen a lot in the last winner's final set. So maybe Joe Crush goes for it. He was going for another seed planter. they running up on him. That's pretty long range startup. And King Ray Jr. is ready to stuff it. Look at the chip damage. Look how much gray health that he's taken away from Joe. But Joe has the better positioning. Engager able to regain a good amount of health back. And Accordion Punch pushes Ju uh, Junior back against the wall. Nicely done to break the grab. But Joe Crush is closing the distance once again after the heat smash. King Ray Jr. finally breaking a bunch of these throws. That's what stopped him last time. Can he get out of there? Yes, he does. He got the screen kick into the immediate bitty bitty inner strength. Can we get the Rage Art here to kill? I think we can. Yep, doesn't even need to hold it. Just go straight for the kill. Let him get a breather here and stabilize this with one round in. Baby, baby. We're on the Fallen Destiny stage right here, and I can see Destiny's falling from the sky. Joe Crush is trying to get King Ray Jr. to fall over to that wall. King Ray Jr. does get the keepers to get out, but Joe pushes him right back with the heat dash. It really is Destiny's Child falling through the grace as Junior is trying to make the comeback of a lifetime right now. He's a survivor. He's not going to give up. He's not even going to bother. Like, he's sitting comfortably. He has the life lead. He has the aura. No heat, though. But he's finally getting hit after this jackhammer. Junior finding the timing on the punch and activating Rage Art. Absorbs the damage and dishes right back out to Joe. It's not going to kill. But he will take the lead. Three. Never mind, he's dead. Well, that was a big old standing hit right there. And King Ray Jr. lost quite a bit of life as well. You know, not getting the punish on that is unfortunate, but he does immediately get the heat engager into C planner. Who would have been? down again. He gets the wall standing 2 1. Spikes down Jr. Yo loves to just back guys into the wall, and I guess he decided to duck at the very last moment. Unfortunate, but he does keep the map advantage. 4-2, get out of here, and gets the boot. Joe Crush makes him talk to the hand, and talks to the boot. 1-2-1, one, right, one, Tony. 1-2-1. One, one. I think we do it, man. I, listen, I know the TOs love to have their nap times and whatnot, but you signed up to be a part of Tampa Never Sleeps, and I need more games, man. I need the reset. I just gotta say, I want it, especially because King Ray Jr. is the Florida boy. He's supposed to be the one that is really showing out for Florida and continuing to gatekeep. Technically, this is a Florida bracket here, so you gotta keep these Texans out. And you know how TOs just love it when this could possibly go into a 10 game final final round situation. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> We've definitely okay. seen this go the distance. Nice. Ooh, we're getting another one. Couldn't get the wall on that third. Oh, King Ridge Jr. actually in a terrible position because of that. Oh no, he got antsy. He got caught by the second part of the string. And then he got even antsier because Junior gets the receiving end of the 10 frame heat match, but don't count him out just yet. Mmm. Just block. No, see, here's the problem is you have this big ass character with these gigantic hips, these big shoulders, and you just can't sidewalk. Maybe you should have jumped back like last time, run the old Wisconsin back jump. Unfortunately, Wisconsin was not on their side. But Junior always got Florida and the Twitch chat right now. Sending Joe Crush all the way to the explosive barrier. Now we switch up position. Not punished because the stabilizer low. Uh oh. Uh oh. This is big. This is huge. This is going to be massive, especially with this combo. But they drop it. Mm, uncharacteristic and King Ray Jr. had Joe with the back to the explosive wall too. Joe Crush is playing that long spacing game and King Ray Jr. and Joe not they're not against brawling playing in that close range. He's been getting oh my god there it's it was like it was perfectly on time when they twitched up right in front of each other. So fun to watch the TNS 
Witch duck. <laughs> no, how did that whiff? I have no idea. Another tombstone pile driver. Shades of winner's finals where we saw King Ray Jr. not breaking those throws. Broke that one, and that one's huge because the wall's right next to it. But Joe has the, the life lead right now, but Jr. finally pops the heat. And, but Joe ends up getting caught pressing, gets hit by the can can. Junior able to maximize the damage after the wall splat and goes for the rage art. You definitely get the kill here with this one. Can Joe Crush stop King Ray Jr. from continuing? Never mind, King Ray Jr. apparently had a little bit more scaling than I thought. And then the immediate low parry on the wake up three. That's gonna send it. He's so good with that ra uh, Rage Art into the low parry. <laughs> he gets that so many times, but he also gets that a lot with the whip punish of the 4-2, sending Joe Crush into the explosive wall, but it's not gonna explode just yet. But the damage done is coming in. Unblockable gets denied by the heat burst. And now putting Junior back against the wall. Himself out of there but he can't oh man couldn't get the wall standing too unfortunate king ray jr is using the exerciser and trying to continue joe crush does not get his last hit on the floor but king ray does finish it with the destabilizer mid so we've seen mid low low mid so far and the rock paper scissors out of the destabilizer throw king ray jr one game away from the reset Mm -hmm. And the thing is as well, Joe is doing a great job mixing his options as well. He's not really abusing the lows this time compared to Winner's Final. And as well, not abusing the throws. Get ready for the he next did get what the I'm, tombstone in that last game. That, that he did. But not, but not, not, as, not as much as in Winner's Finals, definitely. I, what I'm realizing as well, that Joe isn't abusing the gamma barrier as well. Stopping Junior in its track. Fight. Yeah, he did There's a, a lot really of good one missing. in game one though. Mm -hmm. A good amount of things missing, but... Joe still has a lot of room and a lot of time to re uh, to readjust. Very great we got on the two-one string right there for Joe Crush to get a wall standing one on. Tries to go for the grab as you mentioned it earlier in the White Mountain throw, stopping Joe Crush from doing the gamma. He's taking all your advice and it is going the wrong way, Spirit. Shimmy again. He's doing it. Junior showing no fear, and he's definitely not showing any fear after the exerciser just crushes Joe's teeth afterwards. You duck in? Oh, Shago Hide. Whiffing. Whiffing. 442 into the heat burst, extending the combo and extending the wall carry. Oh, you're dead. Bye bye. <laughs> That's an 18 second perfect we saw right there, mathematically speaking, that is. And already starting with the down back one. King Ray Jr. trying to stop any of that and just get the dash up into one plus two whip punish. What a beautiful inner strength. Jr. tried to use the armor out of there, trying to get control back. Oh my god, three misses down forward two, but he gets the low pair. Not the combo he wanted, but the combo he will gladly take. Another one. Yeah, I think King Ray Jr. Or, or rather, Joe Crush thought that King Ray Jr. was going to go for the armor. He went low instead to stop the armor. Doesn't get that. And again, not getting the launch punishable low launched. That's the second time I've seen it so far. Not that one plus two, but the last time was the, the stabilizer low. Yeah, that's going to be huge because this sets Jr. into reset point. But Joe not going down with a fight. He's going to start it off with the first forward forward two launcher here. So far sitting on the perfect and sitting on heat. He's gonna mod his way through, flex on him, and triple down the pulverizer and closes it with the heat smash. Another perfect for Joe, by the way. Launch it! Yes, down for two. Mix it up, seed planter coming in into the down jab, and Junior denies the perfect this time. But he's not gonna deny the pressure because the tombstone setting him, burning him to the sands. Ray Jr. needs to bring it back right here, but unfortunately he shimmied a little bit too hard and the down back one stopping it and we got a game five. By the way, thanks to the Dynasty for telling me that apparently it is not launch punishable, the destabilizer low, it's apparently only negative 14. Max Ninja, I blame you. Ninja told me that it was minus 18. 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna blame him for all of that propaganda that I've been putting out. <laughs> Can't believe you lied to my boy like that when he took you to the airport. That's crazy. It is crazy, man. <laughs> What's crazy as well of how Joe Crush keeps it composed. We are going to a potential final game. Mm, immediately with the tie open blast, King Ray Jr. walking right into the back one plus two. And the cameraman not really figuring out what he wants to do with it. Ugh, Sabaki. King Ray Jr. know what he want to do with that. That down four to Sabaki always hits. <laughs> Chopping through. Goes for the grab, but goes for the low mix-up, and the Tooth Fairy able to hand it all out. Okay, Joe Crush 1 plus 2. Trying to stop Joe Crush from delaying his buttons, and then the programmed uppercut knew exactly where to press it. Can you get over to that wall? Not quite, but you do get the corner. Tries to step Whoa. out of there. The second hit doesn't get connected. That's unfortunate. Yeah, it is a natural combo, but, you know, the 3D game, axes make things odd. Oh, it really does make things odd as the back 1 plus 2 gets the heat dash. It's Junior all the way to the wall, back up again. He just sent that, that minus 19 back 1 plus 2, he just said, I'm going to do it. King Ray Jr. just doing it with the down 1 plus 2. Apparently, Jack can sidestep in this game now, all of a sudden. 14 seconds remaining, King Ray Jr. going that in for the shitty coming. one more time. And he said, you know what, if you're just going to do that and not ever block your lows, I'm going to go ahead and take that away from you. Yeah, Joe Crush is not afraid to pull the trigger and not afraid to duck. He's able to get in a great wall standing punish here. Extending Junior all the way to the wall and extending the damage with the Pulverizer. Double down and trying to do a triple, but no, he's going to make Junior learn how to count. This is tournament point right here, Joe Crush. And he got a 17-second perfect to get in there. King Ray Jr. once again not breaking the throws. This is tragic work. Oh, there we go. A 4-3 into the double loops, and Joe was ready for the second part to get a low parry. This is not the start that Junior needs. But this is the start that Joe Crush wants because he's gonna get the breakable wall after this heat smash guard break. 4-4-2 to extend the combo now. I believe he still has a flip and he's gonna roll win it up. Sending Joe the two all the way to the wall. Junior looking in trouble, gets drilled and closes it with the pulverizer. Joe Crush is your Tekken Never Sleeps 31 champion.